This is the unofficial One Piece podcast, episode 301, for the week of Monday, January 13th, 2014. My name is Zach. And my name is Ed. And my name is Steve. On today's podcast, we have the dude. Hello! Uh, and we have Jose Argumento from the Toonami Faithful podcast. Hey, Jose. Hi, everybody. I waved at the monitor. Nobody can see me. Yeah, I do that sometimes, too. Hello! <laughs> Hello! All right, we're done. At least we're doing Seinfeld references. Hello. Hello. No, that is Mrs. Doubtfire. Or Mrs. Doubtfire. Hey, Seinfeld's more like, hello. 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 La, la, la. La, la. Yeah. Um, this got off track quickly. <laughs> today we have uh, we have a piece the twi- uh, the a piece together special, uh, call in special. You guys called us. We have some special uh, guests who called. I guess. Uh, so all over the world. All over the world. I, I think you'll really enjoy this one. Um, I think it's a little bit shorter than usual, but you, but you'll enjoy it. Uh, so that'll be our one of our first segments. We of course have the news from Fire Crouch. We also uh, have an anime recap for episodes six twenty six to six twenty eight, the Creed filler. <laughs> the Breed filler. Whatever. So <laughs> let's go there. The uh, so yeah, we have a filler uh, arc in the anime, so we just did it all at the same time. That's there. We also have a tsunami recap for probably the best episode. Uh, that's that's aired on Toonami definitely thus far and probably one of the best episodes in the series, Luffy versus Usopp. I hope you guys watched it. Don't forget to watch One Piece every Saturday night at 1 a.m. on Toonami on Adult Swim. Um, also, uh, Jose, you're going to give us some OPP Japan updates a little bit later. Yep. So you have to listen to the whole show to find it. Because that's you, right. It's not in it's not its own chapter. You have to just. Yeah. It could be any segment. Any segment. Any segment. Okay. Um, Any segment. <laughs> uh, but I, I think that's really all that's been going on. There hasn't there hasn't been a, a lot of big things happening, right? Yeah. I think. Uh, we're, um, we also have our top five color spreads, in case you didn't. Of course. How could I forget that? We have a uh, top five color spreads uh, this week. You've been asking this one for a long time. Yeah, and we're doing it to celebrate uh, Color Walk Gorilla, which is the new... Uh, color spread collection that's uh, come out if you haven't you could it's actually a little harder to find than a lot of other color books i guess it's just very popular um but you can find it at your local import store or online at cd japan or amazon uh, japan uh this is the best thing you could pick up as uh, someone who doesn't speak japanese because there's so little japanese in it it's mostly just really beautiful art um, and we'll Which talk, we'll talk about, we'll talk about that a little more later. Describe in great detail. And we'll describe in great detail. Also, if you have not listened to the last episode, it was a very, very big episode for us. Not only was it episode 300, uh, but we had an interview with, uh, the great Sasaki Hisashi, uh, the former editor in chief of, Sh- of Shonen Jump. He's worked with Oda. He talked a lot about, uh, his, uh, role, uh, bringing Oda to Shonen Jump. It's really interesting. Um, and if you haven't ch- had a chance to listen to it yet, you should go and do it. Was he on Hokotate? Uh, he probably was in the background somewhere. He was not one of the. He was the editor of Shonen Jump, not of One Piece. Oh, okay. So the editors of One Piece were on Hokotate. <laughs> not all of them, because I think there's like one every three years. I so I'm not sure if all of the One Piece editors were there, but they rotate. Yeah, and we actually talk about that in the interview. How he was the editor of like, Kenshin for so long. Right. So he knew Oda. Well, you, listen to the listen to the uh, episode, uh, episode three hundred. Uh, it's not our longest. Or just episode. be like a toy a episode preview, <laughs> like I talk about in the anime recap. Just give everything away, <laughs> so, it's so you don't even you don't even have to go back and listen. To it. But you should anyway. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, why don't we get into the episode? Ready, Ed? Yeesh. Ready, everyone else? Yeah. Believe it. yeah. Yeesh. This is the news from Firecrouch with me, Zach, and... Me, Steve. <laughs> That's totally how we should be talking from now on. Uh, so, well, Steve... Walk. <laughs> I need to start us off. Steve, me, Steve, read the news! Me no. syntax improve. Um, <laughs> Steve, why don't you start? <laughs> okay, for the week of December 30th to January 5th, One Piece Unlimited World Red was the 15th best-selling video game in Japan, according to media 
creates rankings. That week, it sold 20,092 copies for a grand total of 213,273 copies. Uh, for the week of December 23rd through the 29th, One Piece Unlimited World Red, the same exact game, was the 13th best-selling. We're going backwards, aren't we? Here? Yeah, I wish Fire <laughs> Did not do. I wish we read this like first. We're like, yeah, we'll just wing it. <laughs> um, although it says it sold more uh, that week, it sold twenty three thousand seven hundred ninety three units. Uh, Steve, next. Oh wait, is this? No, this one's not. This one is backwards. So start with. This, the, oh, yeah, I'm gonna go with the bottom. Yeah, right? there, there you go. <laughs> wait. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah. Yes. All right. I was almost confused by the ranking, but One Piece number seventy two was the forty sixth. Best-selling manga volume on Oricon's Japanese comic rankings for the week of December 23rd to the 29th, and it's ninth week on the uh, ninth, <laughs> not ninth wink, ninth week on the list. It sold 29,141 copies. Uh, One Piece volume 72 was 30 number 30 uh, number 40s. Wait, which <laughs> did it go up? It went up, didn't it? it was number yeah, 36? That's why I was confused. Yeah, I was a little confused too. It was the number 36 in Oricon's Japanese comic rankings for the week of December 30th through January 5th. In its 10th week, it sold th- even more copies at 33,209 copies for a grand estimated total of 2,664,403. I guess people came back from the holidays and they're like, more yeah. One Piece. Um, Wow, that is the shortest and least professional news segment we've done in a little while. Although Fire Crouch has hosted this segment before, so I don't know about that. Um, Fire Crouch is also working on top news stories from 2013. Uh, you can check those out on the website this week at OnePiecePodcast.com. Look forward to that. For more news, check out... It's been actually a very quiet news week, as you may be able to tell by these four pieces of news. Uh, but as news comes out, check it out at OnePiecePodcast.com. Steve, you've been a big fan of how we've been doing it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, big boy. I think that should end our new segment right there. So why don't we get into the next segment? Oh, yeah, big boy. This is the Piece Together segment where we take your questions, comments, and theories. And this week... If we're lucky, people will be calling in uh, at any time now with their uh, questions and comments and stuff. Uh, it's We have no chapter this week. Uh, we left off on a big cliffhanger. Who is going to win Block D? Um, so we'll find out next week. Uh, Most importantly, we did an anime recap this episode of an entire filler arc. Yeah, you'll hear that uh, in the next segment. But uh, first, uh, why don't we take some of your uh, piece together questions, comments, etc. Ed, why don't we start with our favorite segment? Oh, but first, uh, let's bring in our first caller. How rude. Hello, dude. How are you? I'm good. Uh, we just we just started uh, the piece together. You came in at just the right time. Great, great. How do I sound? You sound fantastic. Uh, yeah, of why, course I do. Why don't we uh, Why don't we start with Ed's favorite segment, Ed? All right, it's time for Peace the Tweet. Yeah. Okay, so there's a lot of effort in that one. I liked it. Yeah, it was yeah. good. It hurts a little bit. E for Ed. E for effort. <laughs> uh, first one comes from my my love seven do you think the dress rosa your, arc, your love <laughs> do you think the dress rosa arc will end within the, this year new listener and first time to tweet you guys congrats on well i have a question for you my my love how deep is your love your your love <laughs> um, i really need to know <laughs> Well, my, 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 Mitchell. <laughs> well, all right. In all seriousness, we got about 11 months left in the year. Um, that's basically four chapters per month, and we got to factor in some breaks and some possible weeks off. And tonsillitis. Tonsillitis. So how many uh, Like, how many weeks do you think will not have One Piece chapters? Maybe... Ten? Oh, that is a lot. No, that is, like, that's one a month. It's less than... Yeah. It's five. Right? It's, like, seven. Yeah. Okay. So that's about thirty-seven chapters. That sounds about right. 
It's like 45 chapters, isn't it? Yeah, now that I think about it, I don't know my pacing very well, but I I had the feeling since the beginning that this this arc was going to be longer than Punk Hazard and Fishman Island. Those were but both it, around a year each, or no, but no, Fishman Island was longer than a year, right? We've been on Dressrosa for a while. I don't think it's going to go a whole other year because, you know, half the crew has already left. So yeah, I think, I mean, the fights may continue, but I don't think they're going to end the, the battle here on Dressrosa. So. That's a good point. I mean, since we have uh, a lot of people out on uh, Zo, um, Zo. Zo buttons. <laughs> I don't think we're actually uh, going to. Things are not going to end uh, immediately in Dressrosa. I do think, I think we'll be mostly off of Dressrosa within the middle of the year. I think that's a safe bet, like June, right? Maybe. Oh, it's all sorts of time to read it after the bar exam. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Hi, my life. Uh, Steve, do you want to read the next piece of the tweet or would you like me to? Uh, how about you too? Because I wasn't planning on doing it. So. Okay, so uh, Malachi. Oh, wait, uh, oh, 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 I could read this one. Yeah, that's why. Right. Okay, go. All right, Malachi Ray Spears writes: I can't get over how at Britney Spears in those gold shoes in love. That was my fave part of hashtag piece the tweet hashtag break the ice. Can't wait to go again. I think. That's what, do you, true. what do you guys think? I I did enjoy those gold shoes in love. Um, I I really liked the part when she broke the ice. <laughs> uh, I have no. I have no idea what the hell he's saying. But I guess we got to go to war now because they're stealing our hashtag. Yeah, I mean, no one steals piece of the tweet. That's Ed's. He owns it. I know. How dare? How dare you? Mm-hmm. Uh. So uh, I think that's that's basically all the piece of the tweet we have for the moment. I mean, uh, we don't get we didn't get that much piece of the tweet because we didn't really ask for any with uh, the fact that we're doing the Colin show. Yes, that's also true. Has this uh, been adequately advertised? Uh, apparently not, because no one's calling. I'm going to cry about it, um, which is funny since we've never been asked for a Colin show more than we have in the last few like weeks and months, and and just quiet. Um, anyway, uh, this one, let's do some emails. Uh, Noah asks, uh, hello, One Piece podcast. I was just wondering what your thoughts are on a One Piece spinoff, um, of From Up on Poppy Hill called From Up on Pop Green Hill. Also, you may Has have... Has anyone s- seen that movie? Not yet. A- anyone from, on this podcast seen... I Up have. On Pop- have yeah, you? I did. Uh, I s- how is it? Almost a year ago. Oh, well, yeah, it did come out a while ago. Uh, it wasn't bad. Like, it's not... How Miyazaki, I believe it's Miyazaki's son. I forget his name. Um, Goro Miyazaki. Yeah. Yeah, he's got four arms. (laughs) 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 That's all all I can think about when I hear that name. Two of him him would equal one devil fruit. (laughs) It's it's an Ener's fruit. The Goro Goro no Mi. Um, Okay. That's the joke. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's a quaint little story. I mean, it's it's not like Miyazaki where it's strange creatures and like, oh my god, this is so imaginative. But it's a nice little story. Uh, animation was you know very good. Um, I, I I enjoy your pun, and that's it. <laughs> uh, he... <laughs> it would be a terrible crossover. <laughs> Ed, were you going to say it's very cromulent? I, yes. Okay. Cromulent word. Does it embiggen your soul? Um, yes. His soul. soul. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just watching that. Uh, also, you may have uh, seen the recent Simpsons excerpt uh, where they reference a lot of Hayao Miyazaki movies. How I, long do I you think? Did, I did watch that episode last night. I Don't ask me how, but I did. Did you enjoy the episode? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, we want a yes or no from you. Like, from you. Like, it. I got a. Few, I got a couple chuckles out of it. I liked the Miyazaki stuff, but I thought the plot was so basic. Um, he also asked, "How long do you think it'll be before they reference uh, One Piece?" I mean, they've been on the air twenty five years. I'd say well, another twenty five. Never stop the Simpsons. <laughs> so um, I don't know. Maybe in ten years. <laughs> <laughs> Which will end first, I think, is the question. Yeah, that's that is, a better question. That yeah. is. I'm actually going to say The Simpsons, I think, will end first, because they've already been kind of on the cusp, and on it's becoming, I, I mean, I, from what I hear, uh, it's going to become more money-making as a canceled show, because they could sell it to other 
they, they could sell the syndication rights and Netflix rights and stuff. But I'm kind of hoping it gets canceled so I could watch it on Netflix. Just buy all the DVDs like I did. Yeah. You did too. But. Well, I also did buy all the DVDs <laughs> twice over at this point. We should call up a bookie and see if we can put money on this because that's an interesting bet. It is. Uh, hey, we have our first caller. Great. Awesome. Thank God. You're on the One Piece podcast. Uh, what's your name and where are you from? Uh, this is Saichan from the last two times. Oh, hi. Great. <laughs> Hello. Howdy. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. What's uh, What's your question? I have a few minor questions. Um, the first one uh, deals with Smoker and Jinbei. Do you think they'll show up by the sometime during the end or just during this next arc, whatever? Because the last time they showed up, it, it, their arcs didn't feel completed yet. Mm-hmm. I, I feel more com- more confident about Smoker returning, I think, than Jinbei returning. Really? Because Sm- I mean, Smoker returned in the last arc. He was, you know, he was, you know, confronted with the Doflamingo problem. So I think he's in the Doflamingo problem. He's working on inside the Marines, and we I, haven't I, seen we haven't seen much other than uh, Fuji Fujitora from the Marines. So I you know think that's the opposite. Him. Oh, oh, uh, unless, dude, you want to add to that argument, then I'll. I actually do, uh, and the reason okay. and the reason being, um, so a couple chapters ago. We saw Hack talking to somebody on the um, on the uh, transponder snail. Oh yeah! And I thought that might be Jinbei, but then Koala yeah, showed up. Good. Yeah, but th- th- so Koala showed up, and mm-hmm. turns out you know, oh, she's a substitute karate master and assistant. Hi, Plinket. How's it going? <laughs> All right. No. Anyways, so um, so now that leads me to believe that he was talking to Koala mm-hmm. about about like you know the inner workings of of the basement of Dressrosa. So yeah. so now I'm I'm more in the camp of we'll probably end up seeing Smoker first. I don't know if we'll see either of them in this arc. Um but but yeah I don't think we'll see Jinbei for a while then. Okay here's why, here's why I think uh we'll see Jinbei again. Uh Jinbei he he didn't join the he didn't join Luffy because he said you know he had some business to take care of and we we all kind of had suspicions had to deal with Big Mom because of the alliance uh, and then, remember Caribou's awesome cover story? Uh, remember when it was? Uh, Are you trying to story? rationalize its existence, Steve? Yeah, well, Jimbei was in that in the beginning. And if you recall, he returned to the surface. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he, I think he just like he gave Caribou to the Marines, but. That might be the most important thing that happened. Yes. Jimbei is going somewhere. And I don't know. Big, Big Mom is back in the story now. And I think sooner or later, Jimbei is going to have to show up to kind of be like, Big Mom, leave us alone. Uh, <laughs> that's my totally super educated way of explaining it. I think it'd be interesting if Jimbei showed up um, at Zoe with uh, Sanji and them and then just came back with them. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, that's a, it's a good idea because Sanji is definitely going to need some help. He, there's no way he could handle Big, uh, Big Mom's pirate crew on his own. Yeah, I mean, he's strong, but he's not that strong. Yeah. Uh, hey, <laughs> actually, that's that's a, that's a that's a good point actually about um you know because we we assumed that uh, Jinbei was going to be taking care of the big mom problem and so now Sanji's going to fight her so that, that makes it kind of makes sense. Yeah, right. I, I I like that. Yeah, and then oh, go on. Hello. Hello. No, you were going to ask one more. No, yeah, I have a I had a couple of small questions. Um. The other one, how long do you think Law's going to stay with the crew? Because they're obviously going to go to Wano and then fighting Big Mom and Kaido. How long do you think he's going to stay there for that? Or do you think it's going to end by the by this arc, by, uh, you know, by the uh, defeat of Doflamingo or whatever? It's, well, I, I, yeah, I was thinking about this, but Ed, you... Well, either he's going to die or the purpose of the Pirate Alliance is to take down... Kaido, or even eventually all of the four emperors. So, either they're, they're going to do that, or he'll, I don't think they're going to break the alliance. He'll really be the new ace if he dies. <laughs> well, let's not jump that far ahead. Oh, I, I think, like, <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, they got to get to Zoe yeah. first. That's where the rest of his crew is. So we've got to, you know, we've got to, you know, see what happens there first. So, side thank you. thanks for calling in. Though we're getting another call, but uh, thanks for calling in. Or you could call right, back sorry. if you're not getting any calls. Yeah, you're free. <laughs> <laughs> All right, because I have a bunch of other questions, too. Um, anyway, happy oh. late uh, New Year. Thank you. You too. Yay. Yeah. It's, a, it's a new year? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Bye. 
Thanks. Let's go. Down. Let's go. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately the other person, uh, hung up. We're, we're going to, I think we're getting, we got a bunch of calls during that. So we'll, that means, okay, good. People still listen to us. Um, you're, you're caller number seven. Well, you what? just want to call someone back? No. Yeah. I mean, we'll, uh, we'll wait. I think we'll get we'll, those, those people call back. Um, I actually think, think law is going to be sticking around for a while, but Hey, we got another call. This, uh, that's let him in. Hey, you're on the one piece podcast. What's your name and where are you from? I'm Jackson. I'm calling from Canada. Ooh, Canada. Oh, yeah. what, what, where, what part of Canada? Uh, Toronto at the moment. Oh, cool. Here for right on. Oh, uh, no. What's your question? Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so with Lucy and Mr. Cravat being uh, surviving tragic backstory itis, uh, <laughs> it kind of opens the door for other characters to come back, don't you think? Uh, yes, Bellamere is, Bellamy is going to come back. The Dugong. Who do you expect to return, and who do you wish would return? Um, you mean like from a flashback, or just in general? Uh, from a flashback, or died off panel. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. Even though we never saw them, and I've mentioned this on the podcast a bunch of times, I really want to see who Frankie's parents were. I think that's I a definite thing that's going to happen. I mean, like... Think so? As far as I remember, uh, Zambai was talking about how his father is a famous pirate rather than was a famous pirate. Or am I am I uh, messing that up? I don't um, remember exactly, but it's I, an important distinction. It, the yeah. funny thing is I just got season five, Voyage 5. I haven't got up to that yet, so I'll let you know. Well, it's geez, cool. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any, other, any other thoughts, guys? Put the professor. Uh, uh, just personally, I wish uh, Monet would come back. I don't think Getting stabbed in the heart's gonna keep her down. <laughs> I yeah. hope she doesn't come back because you know, she got stabbed in the heart. You know who I want to see again? I want to see um, Elbaf. I want to see Dorian Brogy again. Yeah. I was reminded of this yeah. when I was doing the we were look, doing the research for the top five color spreads. All right. Yeah. Um, I I think Monet's still alive because like that's how Oda operates. <laughs> like I'm sure I'm sure that she and Virgo are going to have some sort of cover story thing. They'll probably be the next ones, to be honest. My personal opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, I, no, it, no it might be the Yeti Cool Brothers. It, oh God! The it Yeti might cool be the brothers. Yeti Cool Brothers. Maybe Caribou will come back for that, a second round. <laughs> Caribou, maybe maybe you can shut the hell up, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> um, just becomes a bartender. Yeah, I'm and, Bluto and from the bar. Next Bluto cover story from the bar. There you go. In earnest, I want. Well, I mean, obviously, they're going to show up because they're not dead yet. But I want Django and Full Body to show up as soon as possible because yeah. I want to. Uh, I want to reaffirm my my suspicion that they are humongous Soul King fans. And also, uh, they're they're really sort of the Vladimir and Estragon of One Piece. They did, <laughs> and they did not get enough time to shine in Marineford either. They did nothing. Uh, they got a little bit in the anime. I thought that was nice. Yeah, but, I. But this is coming from somebody who doesn't really watch the anime. So. I'm trying to think of anyone else, but yeah. Um, Car- besides Caribou. Of flashbacks, flashbacks. Uh, I mean, yeah, Mr. Cravat was a huge one. That was like the big, oh, when are they going to come back? Yeah, we kind of knew that was yeah. going to happen. Yeah, oh, for Shimmy uh, Penis Face? Well, he's yeah, dead. as soon as possible. Spoilers, he's dead. He's dead. Um, what about? Uh, I know it's not flashback, but Johnny and Yosaku. Uh, we saw them, I think, briefly in the I, two year later. I really like uh, these characters. Or a Gein. Or Gein. Uh, broadcast. Yes. Mm. That's even better. Yeah. I'm just surprised that we never saw jo- uh, Joni. Yes, and <laughs> Joni and Yosika, the the uh, female versions. So, now Johnny and Yosaku. I'm surprised that we never saw them again. Well, totally. we saw them in the two the two year after. Yeah, but that, that, you know that's it. From now on, I'm calling them Joni and Chachi. <laughs> <laughs> Joni, Joni loves Chachi. Uh, but no, like these guys are bounty hunters, and you know they had all those wanted posters, and they had Arlong's wanted poster too. How did we never get a scene of them seeing all of the Straw Hats bounties? Like I thought that would be a cool circle thing. I would have dropped the ball there. I think they're his new Tao Pai Pai. And they're just like, oh, we could take Chopper. Well, he remembered <laughs> them, but he, I, we haven't, maybe he's sure. using them for something. Like, you know, we always see like Zeph or Kaya and, you know, everyone in, you know, Windmill Village. Like, how, like, I, I liked, I liked Johnny and Yosuke. Me too. They were really, they were fun characters. Yeah. Yeah. I was just seeing the, uh, what was it, flashback five years ago? Uh, that episode recently 
Right. Which I'm not sure which ship um, set that was on, but so Jackson, we're getting another call, but, but that meeting Zoro. Thank mm-hmm. you for calling oh, in, Jackson. Ah, sure thing. Have a nice day. You you too. Take care, buddy. Hi, you're on the One Piece Hello. podcast. What's your name and where are you from? I'm Young Cow Productions. Ah, it's Hello. finally we meet. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, person whose name I can't pronounce and and me. Young. <laughs> yep. Ronco. I'm calling from Australia. Oh hello. Ron, R- Ronco Productions. <laughs> <laughs> They're all the productions. <laughs> right, in that case, good good morning. Uh, good how are you guys doing? I thought I was just for a call. Okay. Right on. All right. I'm, I hate to put the dude on the spot. Uh, thank I you, man. To insult Australians. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not doing. I'm not. No, I know what you're doing. Because I forgot do to bother you about this at Magfest. I want to hear your terrible Hugh Jackman impression. <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. No, let's not do that right now. No, I'm not doing that on the air. Let's, let's talk about One Piece, guys. <laughs> anyway, uh, did you have a question, comment, uh, whatever, whatever we used to usually plug at the end of the show? Re- request to hear. Uh, yeah. So I'll just drop something by. Um, for I saw this on Reddit, so I'll just ask you this question because sure. I don't have my own. But like for a crew member, the next crew member to join, uh, who do you? Th- what kind of role do you think they should have or fulfill t- for them to be in the crew? Because we've already got many uh, uh, roles already in the crew. W- what, what do you think's left? Me. We've all been, uh, we've all been, we've all been pretty <laughs> unified in our opinion that there aren't going to be any new members of the crew, only alliances from this point forth. I don't never know. I don't, never. Yeah, never I wouldn't. Say never. I wouldn't say never. Um, yeah. I look. That's what I want. Well, Ed, Jinbei's but... the big. The, Jinbei's the big what if right now, because he mm. said he'd join. Right, <laughs> but, but I mean, right like now. that's the. But you know, Vivi. That's another like she's like yeah, oh, yeah like Vivi. is it another Vivi or is it yeah but I like the question it's a oh, bit different yeah, well, than Vivi said no I'm not joining you but I'm still your friend Luffy was like join my crew and Jimbei's like sure but not right now I think it's totally different than Vivi that might be just a really nice way of letting him off like it's like <laughs> you know what yeah sure I'll, we'll get together I swear to God we'll you know have dinner at some point I I'll call you and then they just I'll never call you. <laughs> But but uh, the the question is worded in a different way. It's uh, what what a uh, what role kind of role? Yeah, could could love to be fulfilled. Uh, let's see, janitor. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say aid aid. Some uh, well, assistant chef, boy, I assistant I mean, chef. No, <laughs> hold on, not... on the fridge. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, no. That's Agent. something cabin boy. That's not really cabin boy. Isn't really a, a official title, but that would be interesting if if they got like a like a pirate apprentice because at this point. Luffy and, and Co are not like just rookies anymore. They're pretty well known and they've and they've made a big name for themselves. So I think it'd be interesting if, if they got like a pirate apprentice on board who, you know, like maybe mm, yeah, Momonosuke. Like, like, like Shanks and like, it's the whole Shanks and Buggy thing. Sounds yeah. Like yeah. A, sounds like a toy animation filler idea. Well, hey Toya, if you're listening to this, um give me money. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. Oh, come, no. uh, they just, don't even do the cover stories. Well that yeah. just reminds me how in the Oppies arc. Which oh my god, every oh. episode. Okay, <laughs> I rescind everything I ever said about there should be a cabin boy. <laughs> because, well, I, <laughs> I think, like, and I say, I say this in an anime recap, but, like, the off-piece arc was Toy cutting its teeth on what to do and what not to do in filler. And the one thing I just couldn't stomach in the off-piece arc with tons of other things was just how they were like, yeah, she, she, she felt like one of the crew. She could have been one of our crew members. I'm like, No! No, she couldn't have. Okay, well, Wikipedia has... Oh, no, I'm not ever going to use Wikipedia. There's some really random website, but they have a, actually a, a good list of, of uh, positions we could have. Captain and first mate, of course. I don't know what a boatswain is, but... Uh, b- a, it's pronounced boatswain, and it's oh. sort of like... Uh, he uh, boatswain's sort of like the um, the guy who gives the orders to all the crew in lieu of the captain, I think. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Uh, sailing master... <laughs> I don't know what that navigator. We got that master carpenter. I'm got guessing that. that's Frankie here. Pilot. I, I, Frankie doesn't want to pilot anymore. He could get someone else to do it. Master gunner. I think that's going to stop. stop. Yeah. So- Regular gunner. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a gunner. Beginner gunner. <laughs> Sail maker. 
I, I don't really think you. Well, actually, that would probably be pretty important. Fra- I guess that's Frankie's deal. I mean, hold on. I think that'd be really funny if there was just an arc like, oh no, our sales ripped. Whatever <laughs> are we going to do? And then there's this gigantic two year arc about like we need to find a sail maker, and there's like every everybody, all the fans are always second guessing. Was oh, it going to be this guy? Going to be that guy? But instead, it's just like some random dude. Um, <laughs> he'll be water. Just realized, oh wait, I can make one of those. Cook. Yeah. By the end of it, hey um. Why are so we, even so we got a cook that's Sanji, surgeon, chopper. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's a cooper? Uh, they make barrels. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, a, cooper, a, cooper, a cooper is somebody who makes barrels. Yeah. Yes, that is that. That's, that's a thing? For the first episode, the first episode, if you come out of barrel, woo! <laughs> yeah, that's true. So that Cooper was his pissed. Barrel. <laughs> Who's gonna fix his barrel? We have to find somebody to fix it. Let's go on an adventure to find somebody to fix this damn barrel. <laughs> that would have been more useful in Fishman Island when they kept putting caribou in one. I think so I guess Frankie, Frankie is a Cooper. Is a Cooper. Frankie's a Cooper. Cabin Hang boy. If we, if we had that, then there wouldn't be the problem with caribou man. Fifty chapters of filler. The cover stories. All, uh, we, all we needed is a barrel boy. <laughs> Uh, we also have Cabin Boy, Striker. What's a Striker, dude? Since you know all these for some reason, a Striker. Yeah. Striker. I don't know that. Well, I could look it up. It says here. Um, <laughs> often overlooked, the Striker was a native of the West Indies. Typically, uh, they were <laughs> expert hunt- to go to the West This Indies. is getting racist. Pretty quick. Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it racist? No, they fish sharks and other large fish. That's wow, cool. that's badass. Yeah, so I think we need one. Wins, I suppose. So striker, that's a that's a good option. Sailors, okay. Powder monkey. <laughs> what is that? that? Sounds, now that sounds, like <laughs> that sounds racist. <laughs> oh, those are people who are kidnapped by press gangs and forced to serve aboard a ship. Yeah, that. that <laughs> like <absolutely>. slaves. <laughs> Caesar is their powder monkey. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Caesar. So Caesar's part of the crew. You see, it's perfect. Uh, musicians. Uh, and archaeologists. No, Get yeah, the fuck out of here. Archaeologists. I was I was joking. I remember when uh, <laughs> way back when when uh I was first starting to get into One Piece and I decided to create an OC character because that's what you're supposed to do when you're into a fandom. Uh I was like, Oh well if I was on the crew I'd be the artist. And then I thought to myself, like, why would any why is that a thing? That shouldn't be a, a, a position on a crew. Elvis was God, dumb Alex. But that didn't stop him from serving time in the war. <laughs> okay. Hey. Uh, th- so, anyone. No, it's dogma. <laughs> so, is, is that all we have to talk about for that question that got off topic? Yeah. Oh, man. Thanks for, thanks for calling <laughs> thanks in. Thanks for calling in. No worries. No worries. <laughs> Good times. Take care. Take care. care. So. I think we're all agreed um, that a striker will be the next. <laughs> I want a Cooper. I want a powder monkey. <laughs> <laughs> we have one, uh, Caesar. Um, okay, we have a we have one piece. The tweet from Jose that says, "Why is it every time the One Piece podcast does a call-in show, I have problems with receiving a package from Amazon?" Now that is a good question, Jose. Because we hate you. <laughs> we don't want you to have whatever you're getting. Uh, okay, we actually do have emails. We got a lot of calls that didn't go through. I, and if, you li- if you're listening now uh, and you tried to call and it didn't go through, when we have one of these calls, just keep calling. Eventually, we will answer. Um, it's just a, sometimes we're talking to other people. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, next one comes from uh, Ale- Alexander K. James. I don't think any of us here are going to be able to answer this, but I will give it a shot. Um, I was recently playing One Piece Pirate Warriors 2, and I noticed that Bartholomew Kuma's Bible uh, that he carries around has the same mark that is tattooed on Monkey D. Dragon's face, so it doesn't make it in canon, but I would like to know why you think the creators added that uh, into the game, and if you think it was a good Easter egg. So that's Monkey D. Oh. Dragon's tattoo on Kuma's Bible. He, well, he is a known revolutionary, right? So yeah, I mean, we know he is a revolutionary. I, we saw his silhouette, and no one else has that silhouette. <laughs> no that's really cool. Scaramouche, Scaramouche. That's a pretty sweet detail. Uh, I yeah, I, it, I don't think it is in the manga in any way like that. I think it just says Bible, and then there's a picture of something, but I don't think it's that. It's like a picture of the rising sun or something. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't think it's the tattoo, but that's interesting. Um, I wonder if that's post time skip thing. 
That is interesting. Maybe if Oda had anything to do with that, but who, we really have no way of knowing. Like if Kuma rejoined the revolutionaries. Yeah, but they took his brain out, essentially. <laughs> Remember they like... They sucked out his brain. They, con- they converted him over to cyborg or robot. Like, yeah, yeah, but you don't know how. Took it out with an ice cream scoop. I assume <laughs> that's how you do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, you're on the One Piece podcast. What's your name? Where are you from? Hey, this is Zykan again. Oh, hi. Hello. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> I, is, is there a problem? No, no, no. No, no. no it just, it, it, we, we were just talking about and I, and I'll I'll break our kayfabe here and I'll say, like, it's actually like every time we're in the middle of a call, there's so many people calling. And then as soon as we get off that call, no one's calling. <laughs> so we're just we're, we're we're sitting around here twiddling our fingers. All right. Um, my friend actually has a, had a question. She's too shy to call you though. Um, her question <laughs> we don't, was, we "Don't bite." <laughs> yeah, no, she, hard. She's really shy. It's a uh, pirate Mario. She probably know her on Twitter. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, her question was, if you could take any location in One Piece and turn it into an amusement park, what place would you choose, and what would the rides, attractions, the food, souvenir shops, etc. be? Of course, this is when someone else calls, but we'll answer that. Uh, okay. They'll first, have to call back. First two that came to mind, Water 7 and Thor Bark. Oh, so water 7 thinking, Water Park. You know? I was, I was thinking uh, yeah, Shabandi, true. actually. Well, that one is... Because uh, it's... Uh, it's didn't have so much dark undertones. <laughs> yeah, th- thank you for bringing that up because I'm like, yeah, you could go ride the Ferris wheel and then get mugged. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, they could open up in Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect because Baltimore is scary. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 they'll open up in Flint, Michigan. It's just, oh. Like, just right smack dab in the middle of it. There's this really nice patch, but then the rest of it is just like awful shit. Um, I, I agree with Ed. Water 7 definitely w- would be my pick. Um, Dress Rosa seems fun. Yeah. yeah if, you, if There's all, all a bunch of dark undertones there too, buddy. <laughs> Dress Water Rose, 7 actually doesn't have like... Dress Rosa would be like an Epcot park. It's like <laughs> where adults can you know, like enjoy things yeah. that kids don't understand and can drink wine. Do you know what I think would be kind of fun? Uh, like in a... Like this is sort of scary sort of way, like a haunted house kind of deal. Not Thriller Bark. Uh, fuck Thriller Bark. Uh, impelled Down. Mm. Ooh. Okay. That would be Besides interesting. Besides the dark undertones. <laughs> no, no. And we can have TGI Mc, uh, McShackies. <laughs> That's right. TGI McShackie. But, you know, you got like six floors of, of something different. Like, you know, if you're really into being burned alive or <laughs> <laughs> chased by giant monsters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just forgotten about yeah. Completely forgotten about. I guess that would be more of a haunted house. Sure. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. People like so you this. You can hear the skins of prisoners. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that people love no, what, that. What, what a fun background music. <laughs> no, like, uh, ideas for food or souvenir or whatever. Souvenir mm-hmm. shops. Well, Water 7, you have all the water, water meat, or whatever it's yeah. called. Um, that's why Water 7 works so perfectly. It essentially was an amusement park. Um, but people live there. Uh, See, my, my, my reasoning, another reasoning for Shibandi is uh, Tagoyaki. We could also have, like, cute, you know, impel, uh, Thriller Bark plushies. All sorts mm-hmm. of, like, stitched together things. Well, that's also, like, a haunted house. What about, the uh, fuck you want the rubber band- <laughs> what about the rubber band land up in Sky Pits? Oh, Sky, well, that. Sky Pits itself oh, yeah. would be amazing. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> forgot about Sky Pia. I can't forget about that. They made it up into a brave warrior. Hey, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, what about uh, what is it? Uh, a piece that that whole arc just uh, as as an no. amazing part. No. Yeah. Oh, oh I, when I think of the a piece land, it'd be like, oh yeah, you would wait <laughs> two hours to uh, <laughs> to get on the ride, <laughs> just like how you would to like see some plot develop in the a piece arc. Filler land. <laughs> Yay. One of these days, we're going to do our Oppie's Arc recap. No, we're not. Yes, we are. (laughs) We're we're going to do it. No. Steve can just do it by himself in his room. Doesn't even record anything. I like it. It's It's happening. It's not even on. (laughs) Well, I want to see if I actually fall asleep during it. (laughs) You might always fall asleep during the Oppie's Arc. I always skip to the end (laughs) because I stop caring. 
Yeah, I've only watched it like maybe twice. Once the first time, and then I'm like, well, I gotta watch the dub now. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks for calling in again. <laughs> no problem. Uh, yeah, again, yeah. happy New Year for a late New Year. Yes, happy late New Year to Thank you, you as well. Hopefully next time uh, it's near Christmas and I can finally say Merry Christmas to you too. Oh yay! Well, you could always write me a card. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to P.O. No, Box. Thanks. Uh, yeah. No thanks. She doesn't. Ouch. Know. <laughs> oh, wow, you a card. That's easier. I'm an artist. <laughs> oh, see, she's awesome. <laughs> well, I'm the one who I guess with the the anime fans give back. The. All right, all right. The... That's right. Wait, what did you do for anime fans give back? I drew the the image for you guys. You don't remember? Which image? <laughs> The one with all the characters with the X mark. For the first one, I think that I first. Made, that whole thing's a blur. But yeah, I think it was for the first. Yeah, one. you got to remember, I was up twenty four hours. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, was I. Oh, I don't remember it. I'll have to look it up. But I think it's on Facebook dot com slash Anime Fans Get Back. Yeah. Thank you though. No, I I plugged it for everyone else out there too. Um, thanks, Sai, for okay. that, and thank, thanks for everything. That's <laughs> all right. Uh, adios. Adios. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. So, of, of course, we did get, I think, two calls during that, because that's just how life works. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we're popular, uh, but life. only when we're taken. So, since uh, some people tried to call but couldn't get through, we do have uh, our first voicemail of the night. Uh, why don't we listen to that right now? Hey, guys. Um, I had a theory, and it was... I, I think it's pretty well-founded, but... Um, I don't know if it'll ever actually um, be ever officially announced, but I have a theory that um, about a character that we've seen throughout the entire series, and um, it's mainly played off as a joke, but um, I think there's a little bit more to it. But I think I think that eventually, uh, through the crew's adventures through the new world, we'll eventually have an island and be officially in, uh, introduced to the race of panda men. And I think it's really funny, but uh, I think to have to think about it. I mean, there's panda men seen everywhere, even back uh, in uh, Shandora and uh, back on Rogers Crew. I mean, it's really possible, but I don't think it'll ever be a big thing. To, no, but I think it'll play, uh, Oda could play it off as a joke. I think it'd be a pretty good idea, though. But uh, thanks for accepting my call. Thanks. Bye. So what do you guys think of that theory? Uh, that's a pretty funny theory. It's a race of people designed exclusively to just tail Luffy wherever he goes. Well, as he said... They're a race of highly evolved ninjas. <laughs> well, as he said, I mean, they've been showing up since the beginning of the series. Yeah. Maybe there's just a whole bunch of them or two of them. Yeah, there's, there's even women. And they even exist on the back cover of every issue. Yeah. Like some sort of adventure. I think that would be hilarious if we eventually find out that there is, like, maybe not an island, but several of them. Hey, we got a phone call. Uh, Great. So why don't we bring him in? Hello, what's your name, and where are you calling from? Hi, it's Jose from Miami. Oh, hi. How's hey, Miami? Jose. What's up? <laughs> not much. Uh, um, yeah, thanks for calling the show. What's your question? <laughs> uh, well, uh, my per I mean, I, I wanted to be on the Toonami recap this week, but I'm not. But, uh... I wanted to know what you guys uh, thought about this week's episode, or, or specifically, is it? I know it's Zach's favorite episode. It's also mine. But what are what are your favorite episodes from the show? Maybe just from Water Seven. <laughs> oh, slightly man. easier. Slightly yeah, easier. Just, Let just me narrow it down. That, that does make it a lot. I mean, Water, Water Seven, Seven definitely. Episodes. Yeah. I mean, you know my answer. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same as mine. Yeah. That favorite Water awesome. Seven episode. Gosh. Wow. I think I think it is the one that just came out. I mean, we did. I think we did a top five episodes a long time ago. Long time ago. I, yeah. There, there's only one one other episode I would think of, and I think Ed's answer is actually this. He just can't remember. Is episode three twenty five? That doesn't count as Water Seven, though. That's I know. Like, yeah. Wait, he post in his lobby. That's just po that's one episode after NES lobby. It's the yeah. one right after. Um, no, it's the last one before. It's the last one before they go to like uh, Ice Hunter. Ice Hunter. Yeah. 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 It's not. It's not quite out yet on Hulu, so I haven't gotten that far. Yeah, it's the it's soon though. Like in a few weeks, I think that'll be out on Hulu. Um, that's a great episode too, though. I mean, that mm -hmm. would definitely rank a very close second. 
And also, well, and also, like when Garp shows up, that's when Garp if, shows if, up. If we're, if we're counting that in Water Seven, with uh, <laughs> oh right, because like the return to Water Seven, do you consider that like a? Th- I guess yeah. Um, hmm. Well, I guess if the CP nine. Well, there's also side the side. unveiling of CP nine. Yeah, Bluno from the bar. Bluno from, Bluno the, from bar. the bar. Bluno from the bar. <laughs> What oh. bar? <laughs> now, are, are there any things that you enjoy better subbed or or, or dubbed from Ooh. from that arc so far? That the one that's currently on Toonami. I haven't seen the whole dub yet. Um, mm, yeah, I, um, I, I really like both. Like, there's some things like I think, like the Arlong arc, I enjoy subbed just a little bit more. I think because I watched that so many times, and I be I became so accustomed to it. Uh, in terms of Water 7, I though, like cause... Luffy's flashback subbed. It hasn't been dubbed yet, but I really love it subbed. It's, yeah. I really appreciate that. All the all the, the kids' voices and things. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I think it's Still really hard. Included. It's really hard to say that because the dub voice actors bring something entirely new to the table. Like, I, I don't know how to explain it, but they're just... Uh, Different. It's it's very different. It's a very different show. Not not like so different that they you know, kind of lose, you know, that, you that know, one piece essence. Yeah, but it's a uh, it's different in, like a really good way. Cool. Yeah. Um, I yeah, I, it's it's it is hard to say. I mean, if anything, the the stuff I think I enjoyed in the dub a lot more. It's not Water Seven, but it's something I've seen recently. Uh, the Davy back fights I thought were. Uh, I appreciate it a lot more, I think, in uh, English just because of the voices. Uh, yeah, they were a lot more Foxy Seiyu is still awesome. No, no, I'm not saying it's not. I don't know yeah. his name. Like, I loved him. It's Bean, Bean Shimada. He also does Wapple. Yeah, Wapple and um, does a bunch of stuff in DBZ. The only thing I could think of is he's West Broly. Kayo. Yeah, he no, was. Yeah, he he's, was. He's Broly. Broly and he is Raditz. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Raditz is. No, no, no. no, no Raditz, Raditz is somebody else. Yeah. Buggy. Yeah. yeah. But he's an awesome seiyuu, and I always enjoy hearing him. But ugh, I think Funimation just went to, you know, I think because that was them coming back to One Piece, and they just, you know, Mike went all out. And of course, Davey Back is also all out, so they just got to be ridiculous. And it's definitely a crown gem in the, in the dub. And not a crown jewel, with, but a not crown, a crown oh, gem. Did I say crown gem? You oh, did say a crown gem. Crown jewel. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not quite a jewel. It's more like a gem. Jesus Christ, Marie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jose, what, what have yours been? I know you're still getting through it, so it's probably fresher um, in your mind. Uh, my favorite episode is still, I mean, for me, the I, this was my first time seeing the Luffy versus Usopp fight dubbed. I'd never seen it before dubbed. I'd, I'd only watched the sub version. That was already my favorite episode. Seeing it dubbed, I think, I, I think just Sonny's performance alone uh, elevates it for me just much better. Because hey. like I, I feel like he he was into it way more. You know, that's the one thing we never. I feel like we don't give Sonny enough credit for. He's really funny, but like when he gets into that emotional stuff, and you can count Woman Alchemist along with this. Yeah, he really sells it. I think. Probably one as one of the best at, at Funimation. Hey, wait! This is an amazing segue. I'm sure you're not purposely making. Is that Sonny Straight was on your podcast this this week, right? Yes, he is. He will be on the show, which this will actually be out probably after, around the same time or after, probably. Yeah. Yeah. But if you aren't listening to the Toonami podcast, Toonami Faithful podcast, go listen to it. Yes, you should. You totally should. Um, and you know, I should probably talk about OPP Japan because that's what I do on these. Right, <laughs> you don't have to, but you can. can round off, round off the piece together segment with yeah, a little update. Yeah, yeah. Plug yeah. away. One little update for it. Uh, I told Zach this this morning, but it looks. I, I don't want to get too specific, but it looks like we might have a venue uh, hey. to premiere OPP Japan. So I, I can't get too specific yet because it's not not a hundred percent carpet fun. premiere. Maybe well, not that expensive. We'll have to buy the red carpet. <laughs> what am I wearing? <laughs> let's, let's just say that it's a it's, box. It's, it's the kind of venue that you probably think it is. <laughs> um, and uh, we, we've already we've, we've told everybody it's out in March, so we're really excited. Uh, and yeah, check it out. We sent off the. Have we told everybody about Stephen working on the? No, movie no, no. So yeah, go ahead. S- uh, Stephen, who is on this show very often, is uh, helping us on the translation end of things because Greg is well busy. Greg is so, also uh, helping, but we have we have both. 
Yes, they're 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 uh, tag teaming it, if you will. See, sí, porque uh, no los dos? <laughs> yeah, they're uh, they're doing it together, and uh, they're they're going to bring back some awesome translations, and I'm sure they're going to be going through about six hours of video just watching people talk. Yeah, yeah, I it didn't understand. Six than hour than long video, so much easier than your job. Yeah, it's a six hour <laughs> long video that might I add took literally no joke. 29 hours to render oh yeah i, I remember so it, it went up from the 24 yeah it went up it yeah. took 29 hours there should be a new teaser trailer with jose <laughs> just a render bar just sitting there <laughs> and then the camera pans over to his computer that's the kind of bar that jose is he's a render bar we did that teaser trailer <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm the only one that gets what Ed just said, like usual. Um. <laughs> Ed's jokes pander to one person. Yes. <laughs> um, particular set of, re- of wrestling references. But yeah, so that uh, that took a while to get out there. It's it's out there. We're hopefully gonna go much faster. I've really got to work my ass off now because I have a deadline. And uh, that's about it, I guess, with OPP Japan. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys uh, are too. I'm so excited for people to to see what we we got to see. Um, I mean, I mean, that's really what I've been waiting for. Um, so yeah, no, uh, it's exciting. Oh, and the other thing, uh, I guess what, I don't know if we mentioned this or not, but I was in New York and we we did some ADR work together. We yeah. did record it. I have to do more ADR work. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't. Got to do, I don't know what we're gonna do with the video though. I got to do my first dub work. It even had the countdown. Uh, was Zach, how do I become a voice actor? Okay, you become a voice actor. <laughs> no, I don't know. You buy a <laughs> buy a lot of programs and make sure they go beep. But Steve, I was dubbing myself and I did a terrible job. No, I did I did fine after a few times. <laughs> Maybe you should have said I'm all out of gun food. <laughs> Now that is a joke that panders to one person. Um, I get it. Or the sol- two, two people. Yeah, the solution to that is just to take Zach off screen and replace him with graphics. That is my solution. Yeah, I want to. I want a CGI rendered Zach around Tokyo. <laughs> I uh, want like one of those Taiwanese next media Zachs. Oh yes, definitely. I, it and took me a and you're like farting fire out of your butt or something. And uh, oh, yeah. well, Steve is also helping us out with the art. We had a meeting about that like a week ago. Uh, <laughs> don't put pressure that, on Steve. And on that's the air. all. It, no, I should put pressure on Steve. On yeah, now that's <laughs> out there. Now I have to do it. That's true. <laughs> he is I'm helping. I won't. I won't say how. So I'll. I'll spare you that it's much. Not that big, but yeah, I'm making my contributions. Yay! Yay. Um, no, I, I am really excited to see the final product. And Jose is working so incredibly hard. Twenty nine hours of rendering for a six hour video, uh, just to give you a little taste of. Of what he's up to. Uh, if the, you want, the movie will not be six hours long. Hey, we're we're getting a call. Uh, let's bring him in. Hello, you're on the air Hello, with the One Piece podcast. Hey, it's Justin Rojas with Funimation. Hi, Hi Justin. Justin. Hey. Hi, Justin. I do not recall. Hey. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm driving home from work and I saw your tweet and I was like, uh, sure, I'll call. So <laughs> make sure you hold the phone up to your head while you're driving. Please drive. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm in my I'm in my Bluetooth thingy here, so uh, just probably wasting everyone's time at this moment. But well, uh, safety first. Safety is taken care of. So how are you guys? We're uh, good. That We're wasn't just crashing. How's Funimation hey, I have going? No idea what I'm about. So um, sorry. Continue with what? Now how's Funimation going? I don't know. Um, it's my first day back of the new year. I've been out of the office for like a week and a half, so hopefully it's doing well. You were at, you were at Otakon Vegas, right? I was. I was. A lot, a lot of fun. Um, I was at How was Vegas. that? <laughs> that was amazing. It was really cool. We got the premiere Space Dandy before it was shown anywhere in the world, technically. Um, so that was really cool. The audience there was really awesome. Uh, we had a good time. Packed the room, probably about a thousand people or so, and I uh, got to see Watanabe's new creation with a thousand other people, uh, which is always fun to do in any experience, really. Do you have any uh, so related questions? Really excited <laughs> to do that. I got to say boobies so many times. <laughs> and have it One be piece. socially acceptable. So, what episode are we on? For One yes. Piece? 
What was that, 628 this past week? And uh, in, on Toonami, it's up to the Usopp Luffy fight. So that's 235, 237? Yep. Something. And the fifth season five set just started shipping out. So. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> Funimation.com for purchase. <laughs> Indeed. But anyway, I, I just wanted to say hi, guys. I didn't mean to like derail your show. No, it's it's been derailed for a while. We're actually just drawing the segment to a close now. Oh my god, everything is ruined. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> nah, no, we appreciate the call. A week in Vegas does do you. Uh, I get to see all the curb TVs and stuff at CES also, so that was fun. Uh, did you see Michael Bay poop his pants? <laughs> I did not. I missed it. I wasn't uh, quite there yet. I was still handling Oticon stuff, I think, at the time. Did that so. actually happen? Well, I mean, the smell did linger, so I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just had an issue with the teleprompter like five seconds into the presentation and walked off stage. <laughs> and not never, to, never to return. That's that's kind of it. So One Piece is great. I'll tell you that all day. And cool. Everyone should buy it. Thanks we'll for calling in, Justin. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Take it Justin. Easy. Get home safe. Thanks. All right. That was a surprise <laughs> call in. And of course, someone else called during that. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> our luck. That's our freaking luck. Um, <sighs> you're on the air with the One Piece podcast. Who are? Uh, what's your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is uh, Andrew Baez. I'm from Puerto Rico. Oh, great. Uh, what's your question? The question is, um, do you think it's art? Do you think that law might die? Um, I'm, I'm going to go out on a, on a limb and say probably not. Yeah, we did talk about this earlier. It's, I think it's definitely going to become like a plot point, but I don't think he's going to die. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I mean, he's obviously not doing very well right now. But yeah. uh, I, I don't see them killing him off for some reason. Although it's too popular, he he pushes merchandise. Although Ace did too, <laughs> and he still does, and he's dead. Maybe you know it's like you know when artists die, they push more merchandise. <laughs> you know their their stuff does better. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But uh, yeah, thanks for calling in. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. You're on the One Piece podcast. Uh, what's your name and where are you from? Oh. um... This is Pirate Marimo, actually. My friend asked my question for me. Oh, it's a shy one. <laughs> it, yes. comes, it comes yeah, full circle. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for calling in. We're, we're pretty nice, actually. <laughs> I uh, know about that. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess I thought of a totally unrelated question to my last one. Sure. Which was, um, have any of you had, like, One Piece-related dreams before? <sighs> All the time with Nami. Wait. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ed, do you want to tell the story from uh, college? It's not one yeah, piece, but sure. it's close. Uh, the, Zach and I met when we were assigned to be roommates freshman year of college. And, like, within the first month of school, I started to notice that he would babble incoherently in his sleep. Just say not even words, just random things. The only time I ever heard him say something this is because, that actually... But this is because Ed stays up until 4 in the morning. Yeah, I, yeah. I was still not a good sleeper, but uh, he says, wait... No, Goku, Vegeta is much stronger than you are. No, no, it's no Vegeta. You're, you're, it's like, no, Vegeta, you're cool, too. Or something like that. The things that Zach talks about in his sleep, so. That's so, awesome. That's I haven't shared close. much time in a bedroom with the man, but that's the one anime-related thing I've heard him say. Sadly, I never had a One Piece-related dream. Yes, we're on the phone. Keep it down. <laughs> Keep it down. <laughs> my dreams are all about me. I'm kind of self-centered. Yeah, yeah my dreams suck. I, I've had some podcast dreams. <laughs> wow. Uh, I've had those. I no, I just I, I I can't even remember it vividly. I know it was I think it was myself, Zach, Ed, Jason, and I think Tatum. Of course, Tatum. It's probably just Tatum. And you're just naming everybody well, else. I think it happened right place. after New York Comic Con a few years back. So, like, you know, kind of that's, that's fresh in the memory. Uh, we have a, we have another caller coming in, but thanks for calling. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. I was going to say I've Bye. had nightmares about OPP Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. You're on the air with the One Piece podcast. What's your name and where are you from? I am uh, Khaled from uh, Dubai. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Whoa. Hello. Um, thanks for calling in. What's your question? Mm, I uh, just... It's called to uh, hear your voice and uh, uh, one question. 
about uh, manga. You you all read the manga One Piece. Yes, yes, yes. Of yeah. course. Yeah, about uh, the last uh, chapter about Sabo. All right, Sabo. Is yes. is he is he is he going to uh, eat the Mira Mira no Mi? What do you guys think? Uh, oh yeah. I think that's his. That's I think it. I think it's well. It's it's. Uh, Sure. It's for Sabu. It's for Sabu. The Mira Mira no Mi. But what do you think? I, I agree. Close. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Jose is not caught up, but the rest of us are. Uh, I personally don't. I I never got in my head that oh he's gonna eat the fruit. I from more like from that chapter, I got the feeling that he just doesn't want it to fall in the wrong hands. But like I'm totally open for him eating the fruit. But for some reason, I feel like he he doesn't want to like out of respect for Ace, but he I, doesn't want it to fall in the hands of Burgess or anybody else. See, I don't know. I don't see. I don't think he, he really followed the Burgess thing. That's that's more Luffy's deal. Hmm. I feel like he's well. He, he was talking about inheriting Ace's will, and I feel like eating that fruit is a symbolic representation of that. Mm-hmm. I think it's the most likely scenario mm-hmm. of all of all of them. But I I, I still like the theory someone had a few weeks back about um, uh, Zoro with the sword, the flame. Like, he'd have like a flame sword now. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I think that'd be awesome. I, 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 uh, last question. Sure. Uh, uh, about Sabu, why Oda Oda not showing uh, Sabu face? Is uh, there something maybe or uh, just uh, I don't know. Well, I know uh, H.R. Oda at uh, Jump Festa pointed out that there was a reason. He kind of hinted. He said, oh, did you notice that we didn't see Sabo's face? You know, he, mm-hmm. he's, Killer he's battle asked. scars. Um, yeah, we don't know why. Uh, I think Sabo has the eye patch. Well, we, we do know a pirate in the series is supposed to have an eye patch at one point. I still think that's going to be Blackbeard, though. I think that would be too no i like i like the sabo with an eye patch theory it's, i it's i i always thought like once we heard that and then when the whole thing went down with sabo i always thought it was going to be sabo well he probably I'm not, i mean i'm he not sure an explosion. I, I, I don't have the sps on me but i'm not sure if otis said pirate or character well i think he said the most piratey pirate will have the the eye patch so mm-hmm. And he's not even a pirate. So well, if, if we could think about one thing, if the uh, transponder snails carry on the likeness of their uh, of their owners, uh, Blackbeard's transponder snail had two eyes. That's a good point. That's a good point. Not Just easy. a thought. I, I'm not saying that's a that's like ground. Like you can't break that. But it is a Big Mom uh, the uh, uh, Lola mother. <laughs> I think so. I think so too. I think so also. Nice. Thank you very much. Thanks for uh, I am a big fan. I am a big fan from Dubai. I watch your videos uh, always. Oh, thank or, you. Or, 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 thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for thank calling you. in. Yeah. Thanks for calling in. Keep listening. See, one piece all okay. over the thank world, you. man. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Uh, that's it's incredible when you when the we international get that. one piece love. I mean, we've had Australia, and uh, even though today's been a quiet day, we've had Australia and uh, now uh, the United Arab Emirates. So that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a great place. We to... just need someone from Jamaica, so then we could just talk about Shiki with them. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! No. <laughs> I think Steve Let's... just wants. Oh, is the dude here? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I think Steve just wants the dude to do accents just to do the play, people just, who who call. The dude is becoming my voice actor. I want to see a convention. Be like, do this, speak this. <laughs> um, Can okay. you say this? All right. <laughs> Come on, let me get a video of, of you saying this. I think it's a good place to end the segment. <laughs> it's the get perfect. a video of me saying things in a Jamaican accent. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> doing it again. So, uh, <laughs> so I think that is a good place to leave off. Uh, this has been the Piece Together segment. Thanks to uh, Jose here, uh, Justin Rojas, uh, everyone across the world for calling in. Uh, we'll be doing another one of these when the manga is off again. I or I, I like doing these uh, probably around four yeah, times a year. Better since we've you know we we've done we haven't done too many of these. But... We've done three or four at this point. Yeah, this is like the third or fourth. One. Yeah, uh, I think we've gotten better at the technology, which is very complicated to like you know get the calls in and make sure they sound okay and edit it together. It's gotten a lot easier to put these together. Um, 
so I think that's everything. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, thank you, Jose, dude, Steve, uh, Ed, for uh, sticking around with me and answering some uh, questions. No that's problem. Uh, I don't think I answered any of them. Perfect, Jose. <laughs> no, you answered OPP Japan questions that people didn't have. But <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jose, for no. your editing. No problem. Don't forget to check out his podcast at podcast.tsunamifaithful.com. Sonny Straight will be on the next episode. For those who don't know, that's the voice of Usopp. And if you are a uh, Toonami fan, it is the voice of Tom One and a lot of other people from Toonami shows. He was in Space Dandy this week, wasn't he? I, I thought I heard Sonny. Um, well, he is Krillin, so I know that for sure. I don't know if he was in Space Dandy. Think Mondo Cool. Mondo Cool. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Mondo Cool. Yes, very Mondo Cool indeed. <laughs> that's my that that's my favorite. Okay. okay. Oh, All right. hey, we, we, we're getting the wrap it up music. Let's go to the next <laughs> segment. I'm going Mondo nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's do this. Uh, Only uh, old people will get this. Yes, we're so old. <laughs> that's really funny. I'm you two are the youngest Mondo ones here. Nuts. Mondo Kamehameha. <laughs> This is the Anime Recap for episodes 626, 627, and 628. We are doing an entire filler arc in one Anime Recap. Uh, which expect I, this, to last, ten, I expect this to last 10 minutes. <laughs> if that. Uh, so okay, so this, this all takes place over a night. This all takes place over one night, you know. You get, you get a limited amount of space to work with in this arc. That's true. Steve, what were you going to say? I was saying I was I was surprised this was actually only three episodes, but then again, once once we're um, I'm just gonna call it filler episode two, where that ended, I kind of realized oh it's gonna be over very very, very quickly. But you gotta realize like uh, ever since Eddie's lobby, there has not been a lot of canon space to throw in filler. They had that ice hunter filler. They had the spa filler. There oh, was a lot of space after right thriller. after Thriller Park. Yeah, not not Eddie's lobby. My mistake. Thriller yeah. Park. Because yeah. the I mean, Ice Hunter was before sure. with um, right after Thor Bark, but it was only two episodes. We jumped right in the Shabandi, and then once the Straw Hat split, it's kind of like well, Luffy can't go on a random adventure when he's got to save his brother from dying. Right, there was none <laughs> then, and I think Toy also got a little scared of doing filler. Um, <laughs> with good reason. <laughs> well, we'll we'll get into that right now. Um, oh yeah, let's we also had Little East Blue Creed. in those. That's a uh, breed. <laughs> you just call him Creed? With arms wide open. He sucks. With arms wide open. <laughs> uh, so the first I, I, I enjoy the band Creed more than I enjoy Breed. <laughs> oh, man, that's the ultimate insult. Yeah, that's a pretty bad insult there. Um, so... Oh, just broken. I, t- I was the only one here who took notes, and even my notes kind of don't make any sense let's go off my head so let's uh let's go through it first i write weird glow in the dark things attack the crew from nowhere and then jump overboard and then here comes some guy with a bad guy with a bad guy laugh and a monocle or no that laugh which ed and i were talking about this <laughs> well first off is it power. doesn't it doesn't say, it does not sound good no it does not sound good it's it sounds like something much worse <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the funny thing is I didn't watch the first episode, so people are making jokes. I'm like, oh, I gotta, I guess I gotta catch up. Apparently, there's a pedophile on the loose. Um, <laughs> I guess we could jump around. I mean, it's that's what it, it sounds like. Well, we can do the first stuff. Eventually, first. it's revealed that uh, Peto is, you know, the name of his devil fruit, the Peto Peto. Uh, Peto. But, but it's a pun. That's like, like I have an accent. It's the Peto Peto fruit, um, which I'm is kind of funny it. because I guess. Did he have that laugh before or after he ate that fruit? <laughs> what happened if other characters... Chicken and the egg. Chicken and the egg, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> what happens if other characters that ate a devil fruit just changed their laugh to that? Like, what if Luffy started going, out, going around going, gum, 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 gum. gum. <laughs> chop, 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 chop. Uh, that one actually cat, works a little better. Cat, 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 model leopard, model leopard, model leopard. <laughs> um... Okay. I guess you could get away with this, with, with, with that. 
<laughs> so in, in this first episode, we got a lot of mixture, and, and we we see a lot of it. Mixture of canon into filler. Uh, we get the rabbit waves, for example, a little more. Which yeah, which that. turn out to be coelopons, a thing that exists in Foggy Laws. Like yeah, I saw them once. They don't now, usually come to the Grand Line. Now, for those who do not read the manga, this is a filler explanation for something that is you know in the in the manga. I think there was an SBS question even about it. Uh, this is not the explanation for those waves. They do exist, but. What, Steve? What was Oda's explanation? Um, I don't think he gave oh, a real I one. Underwear today. <laughs> Probably <laughs> something like that. It's because they wear panties. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so yeah, we see the lep- the lepons, whatever they're called. Sorry. And for some reason, and for some reason, a penguin and like a dog. A penguin and gee. Uh, and an octopus with that looks a lot like the Kraken, like Surame. I, I thought he looked a lot like the Strong World. Yeah, that's what I thought he looked like. Oh, yeah, 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 that one too. My mistake. I think that's probably what I was thinking of. Uh, you mentioned this before, Zach, and before we get into the plot a little much. Uh, plot. Yeah, yeah, plot. I'm doing air quotes <laughs> for those who can't see. It's not, it's not a plot, it's a plop. Yeah, Ring my hands. Menacingly. <laughs> Go ahead. Bro, made that joke. Um third time on the podcast i think <laughs> uh yeah this filler arc combined some canon and non-canon yes it did and i kind of like i it doesn't bother me so much but i kind of nervously twitch a little bit when that happens i'm like mm-hmm. uh uh don't wait no it's like with freaking the oppies arc with mm-hmm. uh, being there when they go into the calm belt and freaking Eric being there on first mountain. It's like, no, the difference is like the fact that the Apis arc is like what? Six, seven episodes long. Oh my God. If the Apis arc was, it was only three episodes. It'd be a godsend. I I, I still toy. I got the worst filler arc out of the way. But um, Little East Blue's right up there. <laughs> I, but Little East the, Blue... The, the Amigo Pirates? Little East Blue had some very cool the, little I, things that came out of it. On Little East Blue completely. Um, I will give credit to this filler arc, though. At least it kind of has, like, a central theme. Hmm. <laughs> we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Of little East Blue and don't say to set up Strong World. No, I mean, you're right. It had, like, no plot. It had Mexican stereotype pirates, though. I mean, come on. Uh, anyway, uh, back to 626. Uh, we find What's the out title of this episode, anyway? Caesar Goes Missing Something Else. Um, okay. I have the titles, the full titles for everything else, but also who, the, the titles get funnier. Um, <laughs> uh, so then we find out that the, the, one of the Kung Fu Dugongs is there, and he knows hockey. He has a scar painted on his chest. And he has a scar painted on his chest, which is unrelated because that happened before. Yeah, before yeah, yeah, yeah. So apparently he's been following in the dugong steps of Luffy. Um, and then we see a giant ship, like a really giant ship. And Ed, How you pointed this guy out. get the, this big of a ship? I mean, seriously. He's the only guy. What kind of pirate is he to have such a big ship in the new world? Like, he's got to be the strongest guy of all time. But no, he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> he sucks big time. Um, and this is the most weird and random thing. Law, Luffy, and Chopper all enter a submarine for no particular reason. And they're all devil fruit <laughs> users. And Nami's and Nami, and like, yeah, if that, if that sinks, they're going to die. Yep. <laughs> That's a Robin line first off, Nami. <laughs> like, leave that shit to Robin, who I think did make a comment. Uh, second off, what a random gr- assortment of people to just to leave. I, okay, Law, I understand... Luffy, maybe Chopper? Why? I, 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 they tried to give a reason, but... Well, Chopper's the only one that could talk to animals. Yeah, I guess. It was weird. But it... if anyone else on the crew could walk with the animals, talk with the animals, <laughs> squeak or squawk with the animals. Yeah. <laughs> Let's give the real reason, though. Toei wants Chopper because of merchandising, Law because of merchandising, and Luffy because they have to. Well, also with Chopper, it's for the sake of the plot. And it has to do with animals and... Merchandising. Who the hell is going to... Yeah, because <laughs> I know I'm going to want to buy a figure of Chopper and whatever the hell I think, think Law, there's going to be someone who is... Wearing. We'll get to that later. Law goes to get, uh, get Caesar back. Yeah, Luffy Law, goes, that makes Luffy. more sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't like, know. I just who the hell is gonna be the third person to jump into the submarine? Usopp, give me a break. 
if, Zoro's if probably having, sleeping. If we're so. having a filler arc, I kind of want it with the characters we don't see do a lot that much. But okay, Frankie can't fit. Yeah, we don't, that's true. Frankie probably that's, can't fit in that. Thing. Let's talk about all the impassioned uh, dugong speeches in this entire arc. At least really? two per episode. Um, at the end, at the, ver- the very last thing I think I wrote was um, not the last thing before the, the end of the filler. I wrote, "Wow, this dugong speak at uh, speak gets annoying after three episodes. It's just constant. It's annoying after three seconds. It's true. <laughs> it yeah, goes from cute to annoying. Du- very this quick. dugong did talk a lot, <laughs> which is weird because we don't understand what he's saying, but." Think about it. It doubles the amount of time it takes because you have to hear him doing that, and then Chopper translates for you. <laughs> or sometimes Chopper doesn't translate, <laughs> and you don't know what he's saying, but it's very impassioned. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, we get well, Yeah, he to- makes Chopper transform into, into uh, Monster Chopper. For no particular reason. How does he know he could do We're that? just jumping around now, aren't we? No, yeah, I don't know what I don't know what this is still the first episode. No, but you you missed a whole part. First, they get on the ship. Uh, Everyone gets captured basically Um, after using kung fu point and cool things, and everyone's fighting, and it's Luffy versus an octopus, and he's bragging about how many arms they each have. Anyway, commercial break. Come back. Uh, Then I said Caesar just can't get a break, and for good reason. Uh, He's a douche nozzle. Um, (laughs) And uh, then Luffy and the Dugong have a very long chat. Like, with lots of the same flashback. I don't know if you noticed how many times the same still of Luffy and the Dugong. Yes. <laughs> and they, they do the thing where they do it before and after the commercial break, I think. Yeah. So I think we saw that at least five well, times. Well, hey, at least they reanimated the damn thing. I'm I'm watching through Season yeah. 5, Voyage 5 right now. And, ugh. Like, I used to think the cuts back to the, yeah. <laughs> Minus five stars. No. Um, when it got to the point when season five, when they cut back to the, you know, the old episodes, at first they tried, well, let's just put one piece on the side of, you know, yeah. on the left and the right and look dumb. So, all right. So why don't we use the map from we are, and then let's just have like this <laughs> blue ocean effect, you know, under underneath the frame and then kind of fade into and it looks like shit. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> so I'm like, well, then the uh, the tsunami episode this week also had reanimated stuff. We'll talk about that then. Oh um, yeah, yeah, in the, in the next segment. But we're not up to that segment because like, there's the, tons this of is, color. This is any is this is any is lobby post any is lobby stuff where Toy got lazy and I will say that they definitely got lazy and just looked like looked like shit. And so I'll gladly take them. Re, like reanimating one scene and re, and using that five times than just using stock footage and having crappy effects. Uh, so anyway, uh, they come to the conclusion, Luffy and Law, it's like, oh, it, they say, it seems that Doflamingo has nothing to do with this, which the translation is this is a complete waste of our time. Um, and now we got a dude anyway, Derp. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> we find out this that uh, Breed, this villain guy, does not like humans. Ooh, I kept here, for whatever reason, I kept thinking Greed. <laughs> from Full Metal <laughs> or Creed. Uh, I had forgotten his name no less than ten minutes after the episode. Yeah, I, I didn't write it down. <laughs> I kind of forget when I was watching the last episode. I'm like, oh, I gotta remember his name for the podcast. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they'll say it in the beginning of the third episode. <laughs> I seriously <laughs> nope, forgot. they didn't. Anyway, uh, he decides to beat up on Chopper for no particular reason, and that's the end of the episode. After laughing. Um, so then we go to episode 627, and this is where the titles get a little better. Luffy dies at sea. The Pirate Alliance comes apart. I guess this is the last episode of One Piece. <laughs> uh, so I wrote the first comment I wrote here. So this is like Inuyasha, except equally as lame, because you have the sit, you know, and the uh, the constantly with that show. Oh, only you would think that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Stay up at you, you must stay up past 5 a.m. Saturday. 5.30 now. Yeah. No, I don't. But it's, uh, I, don't I remember know, watching that show. Watches Inuyasha. Maybe Jose, just for the sake of, oh, i got to tweet it. <laughs> I watched it when it aired originally. And not a lot of it because it got <laughs> really annoying the, after a few. You used to have the prime spot that Space Dandy does now. Oh, wait, no. It was at 11 or like 10 something. It yeah, was really early. Yeah. Um, no, but back on topic. Uh, what a toy a episode title this is I've, been, I've been watched through some dbz and 
it's just amazing how Toy just gives away everything, not just in episode titles, but like, holy shit, I'm watching my Dragon Boxes, you know, and they have the next episode previews. And it's like, oh, I guess Goku's going to teach the kids the fusion dance this episode. <laughs> the next episode just shows you everything. Like, here's the fusion dance. This is how you do it. And so you don't have to see this episode. <laughs> and yet you'll watch it anyway and you'll buy all our stuff. I, I don't know if the mentality- You took the time to hunt down all those Dragon Boxes. That's yeah, true. Look, look. I, I wanted to see those next episode previews. That was the only reason why I bought them. Um, <laughs> no, I just, just toy. Well, I, I think they've gotten. They don't seem to do the same thing with One Piece. They don't give everything completely away. But also, they got to hype the next episode. They got to make you want to see right. that. But this episode title literally reveals what happens at the end, <laughs> like the very last scene. Um, anyway. So we find out that the bad guy is obsessed with Chopper for no particular reason, and it's oh my god, that's disgusting. This is and it really fits the name of his fruit. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, it's just really disturbing and weird, and I don't like it. And out of character, kind Foxy. Of. This guy has no motivation for what he does. No, Foxy, but it, like this isn't a much weirder. No, way. I, I disagree with that. This character does have motivation. I'll say this right now. I feel like I knew I was going to be one of the people defending this arc. And while it's by no means a great arc, at least they I could tell that they were trying. They were I try- couldn't. I Look, I'm going to go out there this and say. This is like the fifth reject pile from like movies one through five. No, I think I, I, think I told Ed this. This comes out like a, like a fan fiction. Like someone wrote. It's like, ooh, we're going to have Law and Luffy. They're going to get to fight. And we're going to have this villain that like captures Chopper and dresses him up as something. Because and, there's, there's no other Oda out there. No, but I mean, I think and any of not- us could sit down and write a better filler arc than this. I, I, sorry. I, we like, could. Zach, oh, Zach, I will call call you out on that you do that you i think fire crouch could write a, definitely could write a better if fire crouch would write this <laughs> no he would write something better than this but my you point is just talking about oh this is when it gets really creepy and then you thought oh fire crouch could do a better actually, job no, fire crouch probably would do this <laughs> but i mean i i it, it comes out sounding like bad fan fiction that, that was my opinion of it anyway well the 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 main villain in this little arc actually has like a brief little backstory that kind of explains his actions. And while he's a complete idiot, at least I thought, I don't well, remember that at all, yeah, that was know. like three seconds and they never really yeah. give that a ton of premise. That's why I say, anyway. why I say brief well, then, <laughs> yeah, in the third episode, but I don't know. This guy's just a complete, the one, the, the thing that I thought, yeah. I think I, I, I came to realization, I think, um, in the third episode, I'm like, oh, this is an East Blue villain. Where yes, yeah, that's, yes, that's true. This is like a Don Krieg. Of Luffy's ideals, and pretty much this guy is like, oh, everyone should obey me and not say anything. Like, what are you, like a schoolmaster from the 1700s or something? <laughs> <laughs> but on the way there, we have to do really disgusting things like putting, like, bones and hearts and stuff and making people, like, sit and beg and lay down and stuff. It was weird. This, I mean, the... This is a weird... Anyway, uh, we find out that his plan is to turn everyone into animals with smile, um, and Luffy's not a fan of this idea. Then we get a, I write cage match, Luffy versus Law. It's like Dead Man Wonderland, but much worse. He, um, took, the, um, he took the cage from uh, Alabasta. Yeah. It's the same, it looks like the same sea stone cage. Uh, and this guy gets his hands on a lot of good shit. Yeah, he does. Yeah. I'm not, Look, he has great... He has a great ship, and he has a great massive ship, but... massive, bigger than Thriller Bark. It yeah, it, it, no, but it's big. It's probably it bigger looks than Thriller as Bark. Big. It. We were. I mean, yeah. Uh, let's, let's just keep going. Uh, and then we get uh, the big fight we've all been waiting for in the series: Dugong versus Luffy. Uh, the Battle of the Ages, and uh, Luffy's defeated. Law and Luffy fall off the edge into the ocean, and the series ends there. Is this what you guys expected from the end of One Piece? I know it was for me. Um, well, hey, at least the animation was. I yeah, say, the an- in the fight, it was, was, yeah, it was. It was. It was okay. I think. I think overall in this arc, the animation wasn't that bad. It. It, it didn't seem like Toriyama used their their top tier studios, you know, or animators. But uh, I was never sitting through this. And I go, oh my god, this looks terrible. Actually, I only did that once, and that was the end of the third episode when Nami's breasts were lopsided. Yeah, uh, I, I thought the I thought the end the ca- well we'll get to it, but the canon parts of six twenty eight I thought looked kind of wonky, uh, not the worst I've ever seen, but wonky. Uh, 
You should you should be watching this season five, man. Because boy, I'll tell you. That's true. And the clip they're using for the tsunami intro now for for One Piece has the wonkiest looking animation. Uh, anyway, uh, well, isn't that when like Galiwa yeah attacks Luffy and Frankie yeah? So it's like the less detail but fluid sort of animation. Yeah, but the, there was some weird looking stuff in those. Like I'm usually for out of all the but... clips they chose, like they chose Luffy versus Lulu. Yeah, it was for <laughs> Hey, you should get in this really great show uh called One Piece. It's this kid in the gardener's hat and he fights Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Freddie. They chose they choose really weird clips on, on Toonami. We'll get to that later. Does Bleach Naruto Shippuden still have like the solid thirty second intro? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Viz Damn shows that. do for some reason. I don't know why Damn. Funimation shows won't. Their, their endings are cut. Um, no, no, they have the endings are intact. The openings are cut for Bleach and Naruto. The endings don't even like they're not even the real endings. They're just like no, wax. no. They they fixed it. Uh, I believe they're both the real ending. Oh, I don't know if Bleach is, but Naruto Shippuden is the real ending. Well, I'm not. Oh, well, I'm not gonna be that dude that bitches like it's not fair. But I was like, really? Come on. Um. All right, One Piece episode 628. Oh, yeah. Uh, right, a major talking. turnaround. Right. Luffy's angry iron fist strikes. Also exactly what happens in this episode. Um, so uh, he thanks the... I wrote the pedo man thanks the dugong by uh, sticking his boot in his head. Um, then he obsesses with Chopper for no particular reason. And Chopper gets angry. He makes a stand. You know, this is what a pirate is. Uh, we're free, freer, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then we learn the secret weapon for Luffy and Law to escape are earplugs. I learned that from law school. I don't know about you, Ed. Well, the first thing, yeah. the first thing I thought of was Yu Yu Hakusho when how Yusuke beat Rando. <laughs> Algae. <laughs> Algae in his ear. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I do remember that. Well, it was funny when that was the gimmick in Yu Haka show for a little while when Yusuke totally fluke won like every battle. Right, right, I remember. Oh. Um, but no, I kind of groaned a little bit when Law was like, oh, yeah, I knew the entire time I was just faking being under control. I'm like, really? Oh, I mean, they yeah, foreshadowed course, it a little bit. But, yeah, of course, there yeah. had to be a way for they, them they to get very out of obviously it. foreshadowed it. Right, I had. It's like he looks at the the loudspeakers and he's like, "Hmm, what can I use that for?" <laughs> um, anyway, uh, we learn that Caesar is the worst at escaping because as he gets onto the submarine, Lu- Law and Luffy show up. Um, that was just unlucky. And then, yeah, I, I know. But uh, then we get some earplug jokes with Luffy, which are actually mildly entertaining. Uh, and then a transformation for no particular reason. Uh, oh, he becomes the legendary Super Saiyan. <laughs> he really, his hair looked exactly like that. This is when that. it gets very toy. It's like, oh, no, he gets, he gets muscles. And, and, and the get... things turn red for no reason. <laughs> and then the animals stop him. Red and... means he's really, really. Have we seen a. Uh, this attack from Luffy for yeah, yeah, yeah. somehow when he powers up, his powers actually get weaker, and the animals like yeah, go against yeah. Him. That's the big problem is you created this power where it's like oh, you know, I can make anyone obey me, and they, until they, I can't, yeah, <laughs> until until their free will is just I think that the, strong. I think the writers couldn't think of a way out of that. I think it was a way is yeah, I, I kind of saw it as a way is he kind of just gave up on like the the Kung Fu Dugong because he knew that he was just going to keep disobeying him. So just, eh, screw it. I'll just beat him up. But then <laughs> when you just take the easy way out, say, like, beat yourself up to death. Yeah, I don't know. He's not, that, he's not that clever, Steve. Yeah, you got to remember that Breed is a total idiot. <laughs> Breed. Breed. Creed? Sure. Anyway. Oh, um, that's so the th- only Creed song. <laughs> <laughs> so the Dugong and Luffy uh, band together and... But fight and uh, beat him by throwing him into the water, which totally no, works. Not the water into the freaking sky. Into the sky. So a wobble. Steam rocket blasting off again. Um, I'm thinking I'm like, if he falls into the water, yeah, you, know, he, you should really fall into the water. He'd be the second filler villain. To- <laughs> it's the only thing I like about filler works is they kill the villains. Yeah, and you never okay, see them okay, again. Hey, we don't know. We didn't, we didn't see a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> he might be coming back. Um. Any, no. So we find out, of course, the whole thing took place in one night, and uh, the Dugong, they all return to the ship, um, and the Dugong heads off for his next adventure after making a, what must be five to ten minutes speech. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm serious here. Uh, 
consistent yapping and barking. Which is, uh, of course, not in any language that's comprehensible to anyone. And they head off uh, into the distance. Um, for their next, as I wrote... This is a rocky pose. I wrote, the animal crew is off on their next weird-ass adventure. It's a new world, which I kind of think... It's, it's like, I feel like Toy is not... Is doing a bad job of making the new world seem to be an intimidating place when they get out of Fishman Island and then they go into a filler arc where it's... No, nothing crazy is going on. And then now you have this where they're heading to Dress Rosa and then you have a bunch of animals where they're just like, oh, yeah, we're just sailing around the new world because we're pirates. It's like, wait, like, like we've made such a big deal about having the right kind of ship and the right kind of crew. You need a navigator and all this stuff. And then you just have a bunch of animals just going around the new world like, yeah, no, no, pirates, <laughs> well, no, pirates are free. Um. It's like, Jesus, it's like, Jesus, guys, come on. So before we get into the canon, uh, final thoughts on this uh, filler arc. Glad it's over. <laughs> I, la- I mean, it wasn't horrible to sit through. I laughed most of the way through it. Steve. Because it was so ridiculous. And the, the villain was so, I mean, like, and, like, the weird being, like, so attracted to cute things that he did. That also bugged me, but I was on, it was funny enough to laugh at. Steve? It- as much as I had fun ripping on it, I still don't think it was that bad. I, I thought it was decent. It had its issues, but I, I feel like it seemed like there was effort in this, though. I kind of felt like they wrote themselves into a wall a few times, but I didn't think it was that bad. I've seen a lot worse. Um, yeah, maybe that's my problem. I, I'm happy Steve is defending it because I'm going to – I really, really, really hated it. Like I usually don't go into – even – even bad filler arcs are usually hilarious to me, like the Amigo Pirates. Um, but I, I found, like, nothing redeeming. It was, like, annoying that they brought back... They couldn't even, like, think of real new characters. They brought back old ones that are just, like, kind of popular. Like, the Dugongs are popular in Japan. You see them. They were at, you know, the the tour, one of the, the Grand Arena tour. Um, and the Chopper... I, I, it really felt like... A, seven-year-old wrote fan fiction for one piece and then and it never really it didn't have a real ending it was really poorly put together but that's i don't know that's my opinion on it anyway uh to canon stuff uh as the dugongs head away a newspaper lands on the ship Rook picks it up we find out do flamingo abdicated the throne we find out the Luffy Law Alliance uh, is announced to the world, and the Hawkins Kid Up Who Alliance, and we see weird-looking people from around the world react to it. Long live the Alliance. Now, my favorite part of, of this episode uh, is that you hear on a, I th- what is that, gramophone? You hear Do Flamingo listening to Spanish guitar. Uh, Which was awesome. That was incredible. I really, I, really enjoyed that. I swear. You know, Zach, I think your favorite thing still, the thing that you still like about Bleach to this day was it, the, Spanish, the guitar Spanish guitar music. It's yeah. the only thing you still like about it. I the, I mean, they had really typical music in that show, too, but they had sp- some Spanish guitar tracks I really enjoyed. So it, if we get more of that in this arc, I'm going to be very happy, since it is based on Spain, uh, as we're learning in this episode. Um. But if, yeah, if there's a ton of new tracks that are based off of, you know, that kind of music. Oh, it, the, fingers the crossed. Arc, fingers the crossed. Is so much better. Um, yeah. I, I, like, even for me, you know, it could be slow paced and look like shit. But if there's good music, it helps. It doesn't, you know, make up for all of that. But it definitely helps. Uh, and then we get. Your typical ending to an episode when there's kind of filler and they're trying to kill time, we get Denton Mushi's off the hook ringing for 30 minutes. This has happened before, folks. Uh, you may remember at the end of or the beginning of Marine for this. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's one snail that Do Flamingo wants to answer, and that one is from Law, and he answers. Do Flamingo only has eyes for one snail, <laughs> and now eyes. you know the rest of the story. <laughs> That's the episode. Uh, so what did you guys think of that part? It was three minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> um, when it went kind of all over the place, showing people's reactions to the newspaper, I thought, I was like, people, oh, wow. People I care about. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's like just random citizens. Yeah, it's just but, random people. But they looked 
good. Like they didn't look really wonky. Like they were drawn in five seconds. <laughs> I thought they did look wonky. They did like look they like they the drawn. residents of Fishman Island. No, I think some of them looked a lot better. I'm gonna no, take your so, word that's for what that. I'm saying. They didn't look like the residents of yeah. Fishman. Island. I thought they kind of did, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take Steve's word for that since this is not my you know Steve would know better than I. Um, okay, I think that concludes our anime recap marathon. A surprisingly a of, long. A bunch of old men complain about. Anime for a half hour, wow, half hour. Ooh. It was way too long. <laughs> it was ten minutes per episode. Um, okay, why don't we get into the tsunami recap, which will be a lot more fun. Oh yes, okay. yeah, let's do that. Or maybe it won't. No, it will. This is the tsunami recap for episode two sixteen. Luffy versus Usopp. Collision of Two Men's Pride, quite possibly the best episode in the anime's history, and we're doing it the same week as we review an entire filler arc. <laughs> yeah, so don't get don't get discouraged. Um, we've we've mentioned we've talked about this episode once. Uh, I think when we were counting down our top five m- moments in the anime or something. Um, and this, I think, I feel like ranks, we've talked about it a lot. We've talked about it a lot, uh, and this ranks. At number one or number two, I think, for just about everyone on the podcast. And and that has not changed, even as we're up to episode 630, or whatever we're up to now. Um, I should really know, since we just did the anime. Uh, but before we get into this really great episode, uh, let's do ratings and trending. And these are all from our good friends at TsunamiFaithful.com. Check them out. Check out their podcast. Um, so last week, One Piece got 856,000, ranked number one in its uh, in the 18 men 18 to 24 and 18 to 34, uh, and adults uh, 18 to 24 demographics, um, which is good. Um, it's not as good as it should be because last week was a really great episode, as you may have known from our intense and in depth discussion. Um, maybe just exposition is not everyone's favorite cup of tea. Um, it's the first week back from a schedule change, so. That's also yeah. true. Um, I seems like the highest amount of people watching was like, like the beginning of the memory loss filler. Well, yeah, no, I, it did very well at the end of the Davy back fight. Yeah, like into that, um, I, I'm very surprised. I I really hope this week, and by the time you're listening, you may already know. I really hope this week does very well because I, I mean we were certainly trying to hype the hell out of it. Um, but the the unfortunately it was down from last year with Thundercats got nine hundred fifty one thousand, um, and it was and uh, Soul Eater actually which airs at one thirty got a little higher. So I'm saying this it not don't worry One Piece is going to stick around. Jason DeMarco said it a million times. So these it's getting good ratings. Don't worry, but you should be telling all of your friends to watch One Piece every, every single Saturday one of your one. friends, even if they 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 don't watch cartoons. Yeah. <laughs> If they have a Nielsen box, especially, and you, you go to their house, no, no, you, no, you tell them to make sure to watch One Piece at 1 a.m. every Saturday night. First of all, if you know someone with a Nielsen box, like keep them in captivity because they're a rare yes. species. It's true. They're, they're a rare breed. I've never met anyone who, ha- or I've, I've never been and I've never met anyone who had a Nielsen box. Part of the Illuminati or something. I don't know how you become. Ch- if you are a listener and you have a Nielsen box, please tell us how you did it, and we'll try and get all our listeners to as well. And if you're one of our listeners and you have a Nielsen box, watch One Piece Saturday nights, one a.m. Um, so yeah, uh, let's hope this week does a little bit better. It's still good. Eight hundred fifty-six thousand is a solid, solid rating, especially for it's Saturday. It's still night the highest ranking. For its time slot and its demographics. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, which are those are the demographics everyone looks to are men eighteen to thirty four. So that's great. Um, so it's because I, we're too stupid to know how to spend money right. Thank you, Ed. Uh, <laughs> and we're not popular enough to go out. That's also true, Steve. Uh, trending. Um, these come from Anime Savior. Uh, uh, you can check them out at Anime Savior on Twitter. Um, One Piece was the number two tweet on the mobile app. Um, I think this week there were a lot of trouble with, uh, with Twitter and, uh, rankings, but One Piece got up there good. Uh, it was only one of, f- uh, four shows that actually trended, uh, this week. Space Dandy, Naruto, Shippuden, uh, Shippuden, Shippuden, uh, Shippoopy. And, uh, <laughs> and Sword Art <laughs> Online. Um, so that, that's good news. Wow. Not even, Bleach didn't get it. 
Uh, not according to uh, the information provided. So that's good. Uh, One Piece definitely deserved it this week. And from my Twitter account, which I guess I only follow One Piece people, it seemed like everyone was talking about it. <laughs> well, you know, you might have a little bit of a bias considering you're a freaking host of the One Piece podcast. That, that might be true. Uh, so this, this is a really big episode. Um, and we start out, we have a recap of everything we went through last week, of course. It's a very and- long recap, which I watched all of, but I watched it again on the DVD. Because um, it, it makes, I think it makes the episode work better, like on a weekly basis. Because I haven't watched this stuff in a week, um, but it's also very good. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to like sit through a five and a half minute um, opening intro. It's warranted though, and it makes the episode so self encompassing. So I, I mean, there's not much to talk about the step by step in this episode, unless unless you want to. But I, I think we should probably well, just talk. talk I, did, about, I yeah. did take notes. So. Oh, if you took notes, then we yeah. could go through the notes. Uh, well, it's talking generally about the uh, flashbacks all throughout the episode. A few things to say about them. Um, you can really tell how much the voice actors have changed since they recorded season one, which you know even came after season three. But Definitely. you can really tell them how different the voices are. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, and the fact that all this old stuff got reanimated, it's just amazing. Uh, they actually shelled out to do that. They made the episode look really good on a standalone basis. Because normally they'd just have, like, pillar boxes and ridiculous garbage they did in Season 5. Well, you'll find out for those listening that that happens. And I, I think that's another reason why it makes this episode so great is it's so self encompassing What's the word you use again? Self-encompassing, yeah. Yes, encompassing. Yeah. Like, it doesn't take you out of it. It's so consistent. Like, it could totally ruin everything if it just cut to that map with the blue waves. And it's like, oh, what am I looking at? <laughs> and, you know, it's, oh, wow, One Piece kind of looked <laughs> kind of crappy compared to how it does now. But yeah. but it, this was and probably they, one and they of drew the... All the uh, and they draw all the flashbacks in watercolor as well, it looked like. Uh, but... it, it wasn't necessarily watercolor. It's just that they kind of, uh, they just saturated the colors a little bit. Right. Make it look like it was a flashback. And I, I think this episode, speaking of animation, is, is just very well done in general, um, especially for this point in the series where things start getting a little wonkier at times. Um, I, I thought it was consistent and great to look at the entire time, personally. We could talk about the use of silence in this episode. Mm-hmm. A lot of silent, no music, no speaking even, just a lot of standing and staring at each other. But it makes sense in this in this situation. And again, like last week, the music that was used mm-hmm. was perfect. And I mean, it's music we've heard before, but you kind of forgot you heard it before because here it just has so much more impact. Yeah, And also like sound effects, wind and smoke blowing around the battleground at the beginning. Yes. Um... And I, I thought the direction was really good, uh, which which I don't say too often with One Piece episodes. Like when you get the explosions happening on the beach where uh, Usopp, you know, is throwing the explosion star. What, 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 I forget what they're called. Um, and you see it pans behind the crew as it's happening, and they're watching it, and you watch you're watching from behind them. I thought that was very cool. And you get a lot the- of yeah. Actually, the best one was at the end when we see Luffy putting his hat back on Mm -hmm. from Usopp's point of view. That was the best shot of the arc, or the best shot of the episode, I mean. Yeah, I think that and and Luffy standing over Usopp as he's about to wallop him Mm -hmm. um, is... uh, they, I think they did a very good job in general in just setting up how everything was working. And, And Luffy clearly is in a ton of pain in this episode, not just emotional, but physical. They overdo the violence in this episode, which really shows you how little violence shows up regularly in the anime these days. And it seems less, it seems more sanitized than it well, used to. Well, this episode was rated TV 14 VL, which is higher than I think it usually is um, for One Piece. So that's, that just goes to show. Awesome. I mean, it changed a lot even, I mean, just after the time slot change, which happened in season five. Yes. It started yeah, happening. It started happening then. Yeah. Although we did get the... The uh, you know the big fight at the end of Venny's lobby. So well for like those the- that for those that don't know, uh, One Piece moves from uh, I think it's like eight p.m. on Thursdays to like nine a.m. on Saturday mornings. It's, it's a very Sunday mornings I think Sunday yeah. morning Sunday morning mm-hmm. yeah uh, very different time slot. So the Sunday morning one it was I think more coveted for whatever reason. I I don't know exactly. I mean how it they worked. definitely get more ra- they get bigger ratings. No. Yeah, but I'd hate that move. It was a terrible move, I think. 
Um, That's, you know, one piece is still on air, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think that was going to be an issue. Um, I don't think the anime is what it is keeping this series afloat. Um, so, yeah, Ed, Ed, what else do you have? Uh, I think it's important to talk about Usopp fighting, his fighting style in this episode, because he just fights by being Usopp, and, you know, Luffy's telling him to be serious, but Usopp's winning the fight at the beginning. So I don't really think Luffy has a place to talk about that. Actually, Usopp's winning Usopp the fight Usopp was being completely serious. Time. You know, you'd be serious by being, by being yourself, and Usopp, you know, he still does jokes. Well, you, you, you never think that, you know... Using ketchup as a you know a Tabasco. A, 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 well, no, no, you just both. Ke- yeah, both ketchup. Both, right. Because like using ketchup to you know pretend it's blood and using stinky eggs and all this stuff. You you never think that was serious, and you, we've seen it used before. It's like, oh, look at that Usopp. He's so weird with all his his items and his giant man purse. He's so silly. And then <laughs> here he's using them, and he's using them. You know, against Luffy. Yeah, well, he's using him against Luffy with, with the strategy. Well, he's always used that strategy, but with like some freaking tact to it. Yeah, I forgot that the egg even was was so important. Like uh, for some reason that yeah. I, it, like every time I watch it, I forget. I guess a little a little bit. I don't think the egg was so important as it was when he was shooting him with the eggs, and he laid down the. Uh, no, no, the, well, the egg uh, masked the smell of the gas, yeah, which yeah. he set off. So I, I like yeah, you forget those little tiny things, or I forget oh, those little things. One, one little thing is the the uh, entire sky turns orange when he blows up the gas, and they come back after the after the commercial break, and the whole they do the the thing with with the you know, getting the water in the ship, and it looks like the ship is crying, and the whole orange explosion like night thing they did that was really good. Yeah. Um, no, I I agree. I. The, the ship part is going to be what gets you. <laughs> I think. Uh, that ship is going to make you cry several times in this arc. I'll just, just a spoiler warning there. Um, then this would probably be the first. Um, but they do. And, and the whole, a lot of the second half is just bringing that emotion. And I think they do a really, really good job with that. Um, not just they have, even though there's a lot of repetition with flashback, I think it's done very well. Um, I don't know if you guys agree. Uh, I mean, the flashbacks always work in this episode. Mm-hmm. This episode can't doesn't really do anything badly. So, well, no, because in One Piece, a lot of times you get flashbacks of things that just happened, and or you get a lot of repetitious flashbacks. Or the think. the Luffy and Alabasta with the dugong for the upteenth time. Yep, exactly. Um, but I think it I think it really worked here. Yeah. Um. So, what do you have next, Ed? Well, um, next up, I have. Yeah, that, I mean that sort of covers all the main points from it. Uh, although at the we could talk a little bit about Chopper as uh, the underrated uh, um, part of this episode, being just completely ridiculous at the beginning of it, and you know Sora telling him to just go in, just go inside. That in, that interaction was a little bit of levity in the episode, and uh, I appreciate the beginning, that. Yeah, yeah. But then Chopper again at the end, being the serious, you know, wanting to go help uh, Usopp, but Sanji, interestingly enough, compared to the last episode. Being the bigger man in this situation, or you know, and then Zoro sort of caps off the whole thing by saying, "This is what it means to be captain," and that's what we all love about Zoro because he tell he says those kind of things. Well, this he tells is, it like it is. That's, yeah, I think up to this point in the series, you never see Zoro like this, and I think Zoro just comes out so much as a character in this episode. Even mm-hmm. he's, he said nothing in the last episode, and I thought it said a lot, and now here he says a few things, and it's all incredibly meaningful. Which I think I. And well, I just never hear people talk about it, but you know, people always think about season four, you know, or just Water Seven in his lobby. It's like, oh yeah, that's the arc where you know Usopp and Robin, you know, really develop. It's like, you know, Zoro gets a lot of development too that you don't quite realize, and I think people don't really pick up on that till Thor Bark when he makes that sacrifice. But I think it just it makes Zoro just like this arc made Zoro like such a better character because he's kind of. I wouldn't necessarily say he's, you know, he's by the book, but he's kind of just, he's up front and he, and he doesn't let, he doesn't let like emotions get in the way of, you know, what's real and, you know, how things should be done. Or maybe he is by the book. I don't know. I, I think he understands what it, you know, what it means to be a captain and at what it means to be a first mate to support your captain and, and to help him 
guide him along as to what, what he needs to do to be successful. Um, I think we should also talk about the voice acting in this episode, um, since uh, this is dubbed in English on television. Uh, so, uh, Steve, I feel like we need to start with you, your thoughts on, on that. I uh, definitely talked about this before when yeah. this originally came out, but oh, it's it, it was, it's such a great performance from everyone, everyone in the Straw Hat crew. You know, mainly it's Sonny, all, it's, I mean, it's only the Straw Hat crew in this episode. Yeah, so. it's like it's it, like like we've said like like it's been said on this podcast so much, and not just from us, but you know, from you know Mike and the actors. It's it's going to a deeper, darker place that One Piece has never gone before, and the actors kind of, to me, they just do it seamlessly, like like they always had it in them, which you know it's, it's a good thing. They're <laughs> they're they're paid to do this after all. Um, it's like Sonny definitely just. I remember originally watching these. I was just really, really taken back by just how well he was able to transition into this very serious, very heartbroken. Very determined Usopp. Yeah, I think Sonny definitely is the standout performance. Um, Chopper, also very good in this mm-hmm. episode. Uh, yeah, well, Brina, I, but the thing is, I think Sonny and Ka- Colleen uh, really had to depart from what they usually do. Um, or at least it's, it's a very different place for both those characters. I, like Luffy is just mostly yelling happily or yelling very angrily at someone who, you know, deserves it. But here, um, I mean, Colleen had to play that, you know, torn, you know, steadfast captain and Sonny had to play Usopp as we haven't seen him to this point. Um, I really, I really, really enjoyed, uh, watching it in English here. Um, it's, it's, uh, seamless though like i think a lot of the time with the dub it's in strong world we talked about it it kind of it's it's different in a good way but it's different but here i felt like it was watching it as i've always watched it it didn't feel different which is fine and mm-hmm. that was my opinion on it anyway uh any other thoughts that covers everything i had yeah steve um it's it's one of the best episodes you'll ever see. And um, it's definitely one of the highlights of not just this arc, but just the series in general. And uh, yeah, you should have watched it on TV. Uh, next week, things get even slightly crazier uh, in a completely different way, I think is the way I put it. So make sure to watch Saturday, 1 a.m. Uh, after... Uh, Okay. Uh, make sure to watch it Saturday nights, 1 a.m. Uh, with that, let's get into the next segment. You ready? All right. This is the top five. Today we're going to do color spreads. We're going to talk about our favorite color spreads with me. Uh, we have the dude, we have Ed, and we have Steve. And I'm Zach. Uh, which you should probably know at this point. Uh, before we start, though, Gorilla, the uh, sixth color walk, uh, the sixth color spread collection, uh, is out now. Um, it's probably I, if I, I, you guys will judge when you when you get it. I have Steve sitting here for him. Um, <laughs> I said, I have Steve sitting here. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> I might be hallucinating, but there is a very tall man in this room. Now, uh, it, there are some really cool features compared to some of the older ones. You have a, a fold out of the Strong World covers from uh, Weekly Shonen Jump, which you may recall. That's also available in the English Weekly Shonen Jump, uh, nice. if, if you've seen that. Um, there is also a collection of stickers from every single volume. Um, up to 60, 60, uh, so pre, uh, pre time skip. Um, they're each around like two inches by an inch, three inches by two inches. I'm very bad with dimensions, but it's something like that. Um, and there's also an interview with, I'm going to pronounce his name completely wrong. Uh, Jusaburo Sujimura, um, Close enough. who does, and, uh, there's also a feature in the middle of the color walk. For his uh, puppets, we've talked about them a little bit here. Um, 
And we had a whole feature. It's on OnePiecePodcast.com. You could check it out, Mm -hmm. um, which William was nice enough to do. um, And he actually explained that Fuji, uh, not Fuji, Tora, uh, what's the prince from uh, Fishman Island? Why? Fuka. Uh, Fukuboshi. 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 Uh, He was based off of one of these um, figures because Oda was looking for a different kind of cool, like a a different looking kind of cool. I. Sorry, I finished that. No, no, go ahead. I really appreciate the fact that William shared that with us because for me, you know, as an artist, I was really fascinated by that statement Oda made. It's like he wanted to try and deviate from the standard cool because there is a, you know, there's like a default cool design. Ace. You have to. I I wouldn't say Ace. It's like characters like Zoro, Sanji, and Law. They all have the same, you know, facial structure. They kind of look the same. You could, like, you know, maybe just swap some, you know, swap some details here and there and change their hair. And it's basically the same design. So I, I, I find it fascinating that Oda at least, you know, came out and said like, yeah, there's times when I want to try and deviate from that. But when I do, people think the character looks scary. Uh, also, also in Gorilla, uh, really unexpected when I, when I saw this is the entire uh, data book green cover. But it, of course, is much bigger than the book itself. Data Book Green is like the size of a volume. This is the size of a full uh, color page spread that you'd see in like Shonen Jump. So it's really cool to just see that. Um, and there's a whole section on uh, Strong World, including the poster, not the English poster, the one with uh, like the little squares of each character. Mm-hmm. Um, the color spread uh, that was in Shonen Jump. Uh, for chapter zero and there's also uh, what was included in volume zero including uh, Oda's message about strong world a thank you uh, that he did and the three second later buttons we talked about those in the strong world platinum uh, strong cast platinum and uh, another series of buttons featuring uh, I guess you'd call chibiized uh, straw hats plus there are sketches from One Piece Unlimited Cruise SP that Oda did for the characters he drew including all the weird ass looking animals um, the raccoon looking thing and the villain uh, boss I think that is actually his name boss um, that well, might his be, is, that I think his name wrong. is Red or his name is Red Dead. No, uh, oh, oh, that's, sure? that's for One no, Piece Unlimited World R. Yeah, there are oh, also right. there are also some sketches. Those are for One Piece Unlimited World R. I think that's the one we talked about uh, yes. with Steven last week. Um, and the monochrome talk, which uh, will have more details up on the website probably. I hope uh, so. From uh, from William, uh, who's been doing a really awesome job. I also I, I I don't know have you guys gotten a chance to see the cover for Gorilla, the banana filled cover? Just the front, yeah. Uh what did you guys think? It looks like a fun cover. Mm-hmm. <laughs> cool. I haven't really seen it yet. Uh so uh let's get on into our top five uh color spreads. If you were listening on the AAC feed you could uh actually see the color spreads we're talking about. You're gonna hear this noise. <laughs> That's not the noise. I hope it is. <laughs> uh, but no, the, the first noise you heard, and uh, that's what you're going to hear when a, a, an image comes up. Now, if you want to get the AAC, it's the .m4a uh, file, and it's available on our website. Or when this comes out on YouTube, you'll also be able to see the, uh, the images then. So uh, why don't we get started with our number five. Ed, what's your number five? All right, Zach. I think I might be the only person who chooses this one, but I chose. Uh, let's see here. I have it written down. It's chapter five twenty six. Oh. The highly stylized Edo, you know, samurai. You know that the weird scarred and like vascular bodies and everything sort of weird angles. It's the it's the coolest samurai one. Well, that's the- why. I, it's, I didn't it's, pick any other samurai ones. So I, I stayed with this one. That's perfect. You picked this because this one actually, uh, the puppet, the puppeteer who is a uh, who is a uh, interviewed in uh, Color Walk uh, Six in, in Gorilla, actually based his designs. He did One Piece ones based on this color spread. That's mm-hmm. incredible. And uh, also, this color spread's available in the book. I feel like I'm plugging it, but I don't get anything for it. But that it's a really is, good book. it's so it's that's such a good color spread. It's mm. it's so. Out of the ordinary for one yeah. piece. That's why I like it. I didn't even notice that Luffy's arm goes all the way around the dragon to grab one of his uh, antennae thing coming out of his... It's a whisker. Whisker, whisker. thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't notice that until just now. Yeah, neither did I. Good eye. 
chapter um, uh, Color Spread 526. Yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about it a little bit more later. Um, dude, what's your number five? My number five is the color spread for chapter 693. Uh, this one's this was the one that preceded the uh, proceeded the uh, Dress Rosa arc, and it has uh, Luffy uh, and the uh, Law Alliance with um, their friends from Wano, and in the background you see everybody who's making a big move in the new world, and it has New Age smacked. I almost picked right. this one. Cross. Yeah, yeah. This is a. This has been like computer wallpaper for like since that chapter um, uh, showed up. It was mine for a really long time. Yeah, and I gen I generally like uh, whenever they do a big like whenever Oda does really a a big uh, like hey check out everything that's happening in One Piece right now color spread, and this one has so many. It's it, it's pretty important because I think mm-hmm. this marks a big turning point for the series in terms of like check out all these gears that are moving literally well yeah. and also figuratively yep hey uh steve oh i've been waiting for this for so long ever since um since last year when i said oh we should do one for color spreads um all right my number five is from chapter 609 it's the one with all the bubbles Ooh, that's, that's a good. good I one. have that. I have that on a calendar. I like that one. Um, yeah, this is my background for my PS3. Uh, it's beautiful. It, the colors are really great. The thing is, like the shading, like the the straw hats are shaded in blue. Um, you know, and like the pink is like the highlight of the bubbles. It really pops. It's just, it's gorgeous. I love it. Reminds me a lot of the one that the under the the underwater bar with the neon. Yeah, is also, it's also that, a good one, but it's this that, one's better. That's one, yeah. That's one of my new favorites, but yeah, not not enough to crack the uh, top five. But it is my new computer background. But this one, I just think it's really great. Like Brooke looks especially cool because he's a little more in shadow than the rest of the crew, and just the the blue and the pink both accompany each other really well in this. Yeah, I I, I like it as well. Um, I it's not it's not on my top five, but it's definitely. Got me really excited for uh, Fishman Island. I believe it was like right before. This was started, like was right? Oda doing like four color walks in a row or something. Color spreads. Co- yeah, color spreads. My bad. Um, he did. He was doing a lot. Now this isn't one of the ones he did in. Well, a row. I could just look at the chapters, but there was a lot more coming out because it just came back. Um, yeah, there was. Yeah, you know, there was the five ninety eight. There was six oh four, six oh nine, and uh, six twelve. So they they're kind of they're they're happening a lot more frequently. Right. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, I, I think I speak for everyone here. Uh, maybe not the dude, but uh, I, for most of us, I think this was a very hard list to put together um, because of I, I know, dude, you, you put yours pretty together pretty quickly. Well, I mean, I usually have like one or two in the in the can already. Like, uh, I know that this one's my favorite. I know I love this one. Yeah. And really, I, I, I did put it together quick, but I narrowed it down from like 10 and for very different reasons. I was like, okay, well, now I have to have specific reasons why I'm keeping these. Yeah. I had, I had around the same thing. I'm going yeah, to start. That's what I have to do. I'm going to start with a really weird one. And I can't, almost can't put my finger on why I like it so much. But I think I'm going to I'm gonna label this like the typical looking color spread that I, that probably my favorite of the more typical one straw hats with animals, you know. Uh, and that's going to be the one for uh, chapter uh, 383, The Winner Takes All, it's called. It's the one with the birds, and they're on the giant birds uh, th- going through canyons. Hmm. Um, yeah. I, I don't know why. I've just always really, really liked this color spread. It's kind of, it's your very typical one piece color spread, but it also, I think, really conveys like that kind of free spirit that, that one piece is kind of trying to portray. And I think this does a very good job. And it's also the landscape, I think. Mm-hmm. And, and there's, a, there's a few color spreads and that I choose as well that don't really have landscape, but this one does. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the things that's always set one piece apart for me and to and I think this one, I don't know. I, I don't really have a great reason for it, but well, I, it just connects with me. It's pretty. Well, yeah. One of the, I think one of the unique things about it is it's not the straw hats flying towards you. They, they, also true, yeah. They're passing you and they're looking back. I think it's a very interesting shot. And waving at you. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. It, it reminds me a lot of rescu- uh, Rescuers Down Under. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, <laughs> that I see that. Scene maybe, maybe that's oh, why I like it. Rescuers Down Under. <laughs> 
Don't you start. Now the thing about this and some Where other do you stop? and the thing about this and other color spreads is that opening twelve used a lot of them and it kind of ruined some of them for me. Didn't use this one. They kind of did. They used him on the and I think this hawk, just Luffy on the hawk. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, no, I I really enjoy this, but I think I enjoy it as the prototypical color spread. Uh, Steve, why, why don't you do the next one? Okay, my number four. My number four is from chapter 304. Okay. You want to describe it for? I mean, it's... Uh, it's the colors uh, you're of the rainbow, at it. so pretty in the sky. Yes. From the uh, Louis Armstrong song. Yes. It's uh, with all the giant, um, you know, the giant eels that make the rainbow. Mm. Um, this one, yeah. Well, actually, yeah, a lot of my color spreads come from, like, this era. Like the Water 7 era. Yeah, I think Oda just really was... You know, knocking out some great ones during this time, but great. this was uh, right. this was also the last time before um, the time skip that we had uh, pages in color, like actual comic pages. Um, yeah, before... I want to see more of those. Well, this yeah. one was to celebrate the 300th chapter, I think. Even though it came out with 304, yeah. which I know is a little weird, but it celebrated the end of Skypea. It was it was a uh, big deal so this came i think with some color pages you're right and here's why i like it of course you know the rainbow colored eels it's very pretty it's very vibrant too um mm-hmm. and but i also i think a part of me what really likes it are the poses of the straw hats they're all playing these instruments on this you know this raft but like i think it's just luffy's pose that just really sells me for some reason i feel like i kind of rip off this pose even though i've never really <laughs> drawn it like this but when i think of just you know, just like a huge ball of excitement and just, you know, that the kind of guy that Luffy is, I just always think of this pose of just like his arms up in the air, one leg kicking out and his mouth just freaking huge. <laughs> uh, I just, I've always really liked that pose for some reason, but yeah, this is a very gorgeous color spread. And also I always love the way um, Oda colors water, like wavy ocean water. Cause it looks so believable in this cartoony world. And, uh, yeah, and just also, it's kind of like it's on a curve, too. It's not flat, like the eels are coming from the right, sinking into the left, and the, and the waves are at a curve, so it looks awesome. And and the sky, too, uh, kind of. It's like a, one of those, kind of like a fish islands, maybe? No, I, mm. I don't know if that's the correct description. Ed, what's your number four? My number four is the color spread of Chapter 532, the Shichibukai. Um, color spread uh, at post Alabasta heading into the war era. You know, Kuma, Moria, Blackbeard, Doflamingo, Mihawk, Boa Hancock, and Jimbe. And this is just, it sort of encapsulates what I think, what I think is so badass about all these characters at that time before they were like, I mean, before the, the whole thing sort of split up. But um, this sort of, this really sort of hyped where we were going in, in the story at the time. And it also gives you a sense of like a sense of scale with with Kuma and Moria and Blackbeard and all the you know, you know regular sized people besides, but um, just characters just look really cool. And it's also you know it's a reminder of Blackbeard and also I because Do Flamingos are really big in the story right now. It's just sort of been at the forefront of my mind. It's um it's 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 a pretty intimidating uh, color spread. And it's the first time Oda colored in Kuma, not orange. <laughs> oh yeah, I like it. Uh, dude, you're number four. Yeah. Um, so my number four was Ed's number five, actually. It's, uh, chapter 526. Yeah, this is such a unique, uh, color spread. And I, it it just took me by complete surprise, uh, the week that it debuted. And I, I just love it. It's so different and it's very, like, if you showed this to somebody who didn't know what One Piece was... They would just like kind of look at it for a second and be like, oh, no, well, nice little Japanese. Dra-. Like, they, they wouldn't really bat an eye or, or know it was One Piece, really. It's, oh, God, it's so cool. Anyway, Ed said a whole bunch of stuff about it earlier, so. Uh, what, then, dude, why don't you go right? Oh, I have to do my four, don't I? You do. Yep. Uh, you do. That, that happened, right? Uh, my number four, we talked about a little bit, um, is uh, Chapter 693, The New Age One. Um, I, I definitely want to do one of these, oh, this this is what's happening, color spreads, which is kind of what Ed's number four was as well. It's like, oh, shit, now we know who all the uh, seven warlords are. Uh, here we are. Now we know what's what the stakes are. Um, I love this color spread. Um, and I was deciding whether or not, 
to put it on because it's kind of not your typical color spread. It's it's just more like this is cool. This is what's happening now. But it's it's just I I really like it. You get the crazy uh, Momonosuke uh, pink dragon just right out there in the front. You get General Frankie, and then you get everyone on the side. You get the whole law of Law's crew. You get Beppo even, which I did not expect. Um, but you also get people like Big Mom and Kaido, probably, and Blackbeard, and uh, you see that uh, you finally see Sakazuki's goatee. Um, so, really cool. Um, I, 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 we might talk more about that, so I'll, I'll leave it there. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Ed, what about your number uh, three? My number three is the color spread from chapter. A recent chapter, chapter 726, we uh, we can live how we want. This makes me have all the feels, you, you, you see. Uh, the small the small children you, you of one piece. You see. Yeah, this is the small children of one piece, you know, as they grow up into their... Uh, Chopper's the only one who doesn't get any bigger. Um, <laughs> which, like, Chopper's just marveled by, like, oh, wow, that's how I used to look like when I was a kid. It's like, how oh, you look it's now. Yeah. Hey, you like Chopper? When I get to see him as a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, if, if, before, because you're going to keep talking about how awesome it is, and I feel like that should continue, so I'll throw in my gripe real quick. It would have been cooler if Oda drew him as, you know, just like the reindeer that he was. Ooh, yeah. Walking around. That would have been interesting. I felt like more like, oh, look how far we've come. Yeah. Like, no uh, offense, Oda. It just doesn't seem, it, you don't get that sense from Chopper. But maybe that, that's the joke in that. <laughs> The runner-up for this spot actually was a casual discovery, if any of y'all, y'all remember that. It showed, like, action scenes from the characters' pasts. But I like the sort of yeah. the, foc- the focus on them with uh, with their child doppelgangers is – it's uh, it shows, like, the promise of youth and all the things that they thought about before they became pirates and went on this journey. And I, I, I like it. It makes me a little sentimental. And it's only, like, two or three weeks old at this point. Mm-hmm. Casual yeah. discovery yeah. is also a really nice one um, just because I thought it was really cool. It's like, oh, this is – you know, this was the characters when they first showed up, you know, or this was like their first big scene. And it's just it's it's crazy how much their designs have changed since. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, I'll actually talk about that more in my number two. So you can go to the next number three. Uh, dude, number three. All right. Uh, my number three is actually the last color spread that uh, was featured with the pre time skip straw hats. Uh, it was from Chapter 595. And uh mm-hmm. It's astounding how fast <laughs> the time fleets. And uh, this is the, the one where they're all sitting on rainbow-colored beanbag chairs, uh, drawing on each other with Sharpies, and um, just generally having a great time. And uh, I love how shiny everything is in this one. Yeah. There's so many, like, folds and... and uh, Look at the detail on that. Jeez. Yeah. It's pretty no, like, ridiculous. There's no animal in this besides Chopper. You know, <laughs> you're right, <laughs> and I might have I might have noticed that the first time around. But yeah, this I, I don't think there are any others that that have no animal on them. Uh, at least the I, standard. I think there bits. are. I'm just but. But yeah, uh, it's a really it's really cute, very nice, and mm-hmm. it's kind of a really great way to end the. Uh, Pre time skip uh, era of One Piece, and God, it's colorful. Look at it. Oh, I I absolutely loved this one when the, it came out. This the came detail out, level on the bean bags is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. This came out right around the time when I first got my computer, and this was my background. Yeah, this was my just, for a while too. I just think the the rainbow color scheme just really pops, uh, and I even love like the the background paper that it was printed on for the magazine. The rainbow, just yeah. the rainbow on the rainbow, looks really good. Um, also, the, I love that Zoro has this fridge it's full <laughs> of booze, which reminds and, me of one that I almost picked, which was um, whiskey or beer. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I, I, I do like about the, that. Yeah. I do like the gimmick though of them drawing the Jolly Roger on each other. Um, case in point, like some of the unique ones, uh, Frankie with the Jolly Roger on his on his shin, and he put Brooks top hat on his knee. Uh, Sanji has the skull on one hand and the crossbones on the other. Chopper has it on the side of his face, and his uh, his left eye is one of the eyes for the Jolly Roger. And uh, Luffy put a little. Luffy has a crown on his. Yeah, that's really. I, I like that. Um, also, it appears that uh, Brooke is wearing Frankie's sunglasses. Yes. <laughs> 
Uh, my number three kind of treads the same ground as Ed's. Um, it's uh, for the uh, the Japanese, the same Japanese painting you picked, uh, chapter five twenty six, um, with uh, Luffy, Nami, and Zoro. I, I'm so, it's just so wow, unique. We all picked it, um, uh, except me. I'll say right now, I'm the only person that didn't put this in my top five. Oh, okay. Uh, I I really really like this, and we we saw Oda only do this one other time, and that was actually. Um, for Naruto's 10th anniversary, I think, uh, he drew Naruto in the style. Um, but I, I hope that Oda, when he's done with One Piece, experiments and does something in this style, like a, a mini, you know, series, which he said he was interested in doing anyway. Um, he's clearly interested in samurai and early uh, and uh, Edo period and early Japanese culture. So, and he, we have a lot of this kind of color spread, but this is definitely my favorite. Uh, Ed and I were talking a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess it's time for number twos. And nope. <laughs> number three, Steve, I, I skipped over you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, fine, I, Steve. I knew that, you I knew that happened when you went, but I wasn't going to cut you off. That's nah, fine. M- my number three... And I think when the time this came out, this was probably like everyone's favorite color spread. Um, chapter 377, Mugiwara Pirates versus Cypher Pole number nine. Yeah, that now, was definitely one of my runner-up. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy someone yeah. brought, someone. Uh, okay, good. Up. Now, I don't feel like so much like a schmuck for picking it because no, it's not it's not one of the more unique color spreads. You know, there's no cool animals. There's no cool setting. It's just, oh, here's the good guys versus the bad guys. But it was so cool. <laughs> Uh, and I remember just like how everyone was just flipping out because Frankie was included and everyone was like, There's like he's, he's got to be in the crew. Frankie's in the crew. He's in the color spread with the Straw Hat Pirates. Um, like, you know, we had Soge King in there. Uh, we got to see like the CP9 guys in color, though. You know, they all wear black, so it wasn't that special. But it was it was cool to see, you know, Fukuro has green hair and Spondum has purple hair. Uh, it was just it looked really cool. And I think this was uh Somehow, some way, this was, I think, my first uh, desktop background. Yeah, this was among mine, too. I remember when this uh, this came out, mm-hmm. Jason um, yes. had a Jake. friend at Kinko's, and he got this gigantic version of this printed out. Yep. It, it was like the – like it never needed to be that big, but he had it like <laughs> on his wall. Yep. And um, – yeah, everybody really loved that. That is that is a, a very good choice. See, and also, most, most of us use this as a wallpaper for our computer. He used it as a wallpaper for his room. Yeah. <laughs> and the characters also just drawn very well. And Sanji's also still, for whatever reason, is just still drawn in his Water 7 outfit, the the vest and orange button up. Although I have to say like one, one thing that bugs me about look. this one thing that bugs me about this uh color spread is that Zoro and Sanji have the exact same face. In the exact, exact same, same pose, yeah. 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 Hey! I wouldn't say that. I mean, it's yeah, similar. Like, it's different. I could distinguish the two, but... They should okay. be facing opposite... No, no, but they're all facing the same direction. It's all right. It's, it's, offset, be... it's offset by Frankie's awesome face. Yes. yes. <laughs> but they actually are all standing cross-armed. Every single one of them are standing yeah. cross-armed. Except That's for Nami and uh, and uh, Soga King. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, why don't we do number twos now? Uh, Ed, why don't we start with you? Okay. My number two is a double number two. It's chapters one and 598. Ah, very nice. Yes. Uh, it just goes to show, I'm I think. I'm glad you did this, yeah. Yeah, because I've been looking at it, because that's, um, God, the 598 is the, uh, what it's on one of my calendars in my room right now. Um, but just to see the difference, I'm looking at it on the wall, I'm looking at chapter one on my computer right now. Um just to see the difference in you know how the crew has changed, how the crew has gotten bigger over time, how their ambitions have gotten bigger over time, how Oda's art style has changed. Yeah, the people who were really important at the beginning. They have you know Shanks and Lucky Roo and Yasop and uh, the the Shanks pirates there, but now Luffy has a crew of his own. So you don't you don't need to uh, include all these other people. He's found his family. So uh, the, the the change over time is the most important thing here. It's not. Yeah. I mean it's a I mean it's a pretty interesting pose and pretty interesting uh, overall, but. Uh, I yeah, I, change this is, just, is important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely like an honorable mention for me. Um, I I do remember like I think we I think we definitely showed this color spread to a bunch of the Funimation voice actors years ago, and the one response I can remember distinctly was uh, Colleen's, and it's like oh they've all changed so much, and you know Navi too just look <laughs> 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 referring, referring to her bus size. <laughs> 
I think Oda's also mentioned that. And they'll mm-hmm. get bigger. Um, Steve, what's your number two? My number two is, I've uh, mentioned this tons of times before. Yeah. I think in our top five with locations, um, I definitely talked about how much I like this one. It's 394, the, uh, the rainforest one. Very with uh, choice, Luffy yeah. standing, Luffy and Chopper riding the tiger, and uh, Robin, you know, looking at that little dragon thing. It's just such an amazing looking color spread. Right, just with the, with this with the sunlight kind of beaming through the the trees, just the shadows, and just the the right choice in colors for their outfits. It's just great. And a very realistic it. looking tiger. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that you guys are here because I didn't make most of my choices based on art. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew I'll Steve would, which is why I was. And dude, dude would too, I think. So, yeah, I had there a lot of a lot of my runners up were like were like the uh, the one when uh, during Impel Down, where it's like Luffy's patched together Impel Down crew in like old samurai outfits. Yes, that almost made my list as well. It's yeah, uh, that's fun. yeah the Shichibukai one that almost made mine. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, like just really weird ones like that that feature a lot of. Uh, Characters other than the Straw Hats nearly made my list. Yeah, you guys really love the Japanese stuff. It's it's cool. And when you're not from Japan, it seems cooler because it's foreign. Because it's from Japan. That's why none of us <laughs> like the hot dog color spread. <laughs> yeah, it must be it. So what? They're having a barbecue. Big deal. <laughs> I'll eat dog. Man. <laughs> no, but Steve, I'm really I'm really happy you brought this one in because I was going to, and I'm like, Steve will probably mention this, and I oh, yeah. kind of want to do some different ones anyway. But this I was is really almost torn. One. I was I wasn't sure if this was gonna be my number one, but um, it, of course it came close. But this one's just, it's so awesome, and I would not I would totally love to have like a poster size of this. Oh, I would not care definitely because it's not just like a awesome manga you know looking poster. It's just a like a, just a beautiful piece of art in general it is um dude number two my number two my number two is fairly fairly recent not fairly fairly but it's pretty recent i guess um this is chapter 664 attack it's got um all the uh all the men of the uh of the one piece uh straw hat crew on the mini mary firing guns and god they, they're so cool very um, modern guns yeah, I love this one. Um, well, first, like the what really, what really like I love is just all the smoke and the waves. Oh god, the waves look so nice. Yes, a lot of great ink work there. Um, and I love that everybody's got a big fat cigar in their mouth. <laughs> and Luffy has meat. <laughs> and Luffy's got meat. I think Sanji still has a cigarette. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Uh, there's smoke coming out of Brooke's eye holes, which that, I think yeah, is that's, that's, that's like that, part of that. that's like one of my favorite gags in Strong World. So I'm glad that that was kind of brought back. And uh, like, I, I like how it's it's just straight. Like uh, it's very very linear. It's, it's just they're looking mm-hmm. to the left rather than like you know oh it's a big landscape. It's very like it, it reminds me a lot of uh, Ashley Wood stuff. Not in how like he he does his art. But Ashley Wood's art is very like it's very like uh military and kind of like gritty. And um I know that Oda is a huge Ashley Wood fan actually. So he might have gained a little bit of inspiration, especially in how brass these guns look. <laughs> and I love the color scheme that everybody's got going. Yeah. For some reason I, it's also remind me of the uh Ant Hill mob gang from The Ant Hill Mob like, from uh, Wacky yeah. Races. Yeah. yeah. There's a bunch of guys in just one vehicle, just with guns. <laughs> yep. And the poses are really great too, aren't they? They're I great. especially like Luffy, just dangling over the the Mini Mary. And now you're gonna notice a trend with all of mine, but this was a wallpaper for a while too. Yeah, mine too. Mine too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so my my number two is the color spread for uh, chapter two hundred and one. Uh, which has a very nice Beatles reference, as, as everyone knows. But I'll I'll read the the quote as to as to why it, it's my favorite one. Uh, this this came from Ichiro Oda in uh, September two thousand one. Um, Greg got all this, by the way. So uh, thanks to him. He says there are adults who kill each other, uh, who kill other people, saying it's a jihad or that it's for justice. Then there are children who see that. One Piece will continue on for quite some time, all the while hoping for world peace. So 
Uh, in that spurt, Oda drew um, this color spread, chapter the chapter two, a one color spread, uh, referencing the song "Come Together" uh, by the Beatles for uh, or in reference to 9/11, um, which is beyond the fact that I just really do enjoy this color spread and I am a huge fan of the Beatles. I think that message is just so huge and especially seeing it in one piece in japan it's it's cool because you don't i feel like you don't see that very often i think oda was the only if not the only uh one of the only uh authors in jump who did something like that in 2001 um really like that yeah i i i I appreciate that i i I wasn't sure if i was going to put on my top five for that reason but when ed said he didn't know that and i think probably a lot of our listeners out there don't know that um i thought it definitely deserved a place in the top five so i put that as my number two um okay uh dude you want your number one yeah I'll, i'll go with my number one which is steve's number two chapter 394 um this particular spread uh there's no other one piece spread like it because of the lighting the lighting is completely ridiculous and i don't know why he hasn't done another spread like this um maybe technically uh it was too much but gosh it's fucking beautiful um this was like like my other ones wallpaper on my computer for like forever but god it, it's ah uh, it, robin is like the focal point of this and just the way the light just kind of hits her head and the rest of her body, and then you see Luffy and all the rest of them, it, it's it's pretty great. And I th- and this is like around the time where you know Robin was still like I think this was around the time that Robin was still captive. Um, Frankie obviously hasn't joined yet, and it, it's cool just to have that f- her being the focal point. And I, Steve talked about this, but I just mm-hmm. got to reiterate over and over how beautiful it is. Um, one thing I didn't mention that maybe you would want to talk about is the the lighting on the characters, how the light shines off the edges of the characters. I, that's Well, that's what I meant. Oh, yeah. I was, just, I was talking about Robin because she's yeah. the focal point, but yeah, everybody else is in there too, obviously. It's just, it's just crazy how realistic it comes off, how real it looks, that light shining off of like the brim of Luffy's hat. It's yeah, incredible. I feel like I feel like this color spread might have been like a like every once in a while Oda does like to experiment, and I think this is you know one of those. And uh, it goes to show you exactly how great of an artist he is. Uh, Steve, what's what's your number one? Uh, the moment of truth. Yes, that's what it is. Uh, can't believe it's all going to be over after this. It's such a shame. Definitely enjoy this top five. I don't think any of you would pick this one. I don't think any of you had this one in mind, but uh, it wound up being my all-time favorite color spread. And that's chapter 364. Let me see what you can do. I'll give you a moment to to look it up. Okay. <laughs> There's so many things going on in this color spread, and I just uh, that I absolutely adore. Uh, let me start from the beginning. Yeah, the main focal point is the hippopotamus is so damn real, and just the detail <laughs> on it is incredible. The coloring is so so good. It's just just that pink and gray and black it's all you need it just pops so much if it's so real why is it wearing a crown (laughs) come on he's he's wearing a crown too he's king hippo uh what else do i love about it and just you know because it's intersecting uh usopp and nami on a bicycle attached to a hang glider (laughs) for no particular reason and and i hopefully nami's wearing pants but she's wearing just a very long shirt um you know, going uh, reverse uh, reverse clockwise. Robin in a very uh, very sexy pose. Well, I wouldn't say sexy. She's more just relaxing, but just really great outfit, just really good pose right there. I think the color spread really shines, though, with uh, Sanji and Zoro in the mm-hmm. foreground. <clears throat> uh, just Sanji cocking this giant uh, rifle. It looks really cool. His hair, I really love the flow in his hair, the detail there. Um, Guys, Steve likes Sanji. No, because I'm going to talk to you why I like Zoro's pose too. So 
It's not just a thing. Is it because you could see up his shirt? It's a thing up. <laughs> yes. Oh my god! All that back. <laughs> no, it's Zoro. It looks awesome because yeah, there's because yeah. there's foreshortening here. Like Sanji, you know, Sanji's not really foreshortened, but Zoro, you have the sheaths of the swords just, you know, you know, pointing at you. Like maybe not so much uh, Yubashiri, but the other one, uh, Kitetsu. Kitetsu. Or is it? Yeah, Kitetsu's the cursed one, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Just the sheaf of that one just coming right at you looks awesome, and just that it's does, a, yeah. it's also kind of going back to Zach, one of Zach's favorites, the one with them riding on the giant you know eagles, like how it's the characters have passed you, they're looking back at you. I like how Zoro is facing the hippo, um, mm-hmm. very interesting pose, and and Luffy's there too, but he's probably the least interesting uh, aspect of this color spread. One thing I can knock on Oda is um, Luffy's foot and Zoro's elbow, kind of intersect on a tangent just a little too close um but this is um one one thing i just remember from this color spread was uh back in high school in my graphic design class when pretty much we had our own logins on the computer and we could you know we we could do whatever we want and i made this my wallpaper my teacher just like said to me it's like how do you have that as your wallpaper there's so much crap going on i don't know how you could see but i i i saw it pretty well i have that problem I, with- I, I, I saw beauty I have that problem with my number one, but before we get to that, Ed, what's your number one? Yes, Zach, my number one is the color spread that represented, it epitomized One Piece to me for a major part of, you know, the early part of my fandom, and that is chapter 464, the 10th anniversary, wanted 667 um, million berries. With the uh, the crew all lined up against the wall and the mm-hmm. sort of appealing off, it, it, it you know, it epitomizes both the seriousness and the comedy of One Piece. You know, re- rolling the, um, tearing the thing back to reveal their naked, hairy legs. <laughs> Which Frankie has to have. Yeah. And Imagine Sanji, him in pants. What? No. You've seen Sanji in, sh- in shorts before, too. We know that he mm-hmm. has that, so. Yes, that is true. It's, um, I don't know, I just sort of, this, the, the combination of the drama and the humor and sort of, you know, the pirates, you know, they, they have these steely expressions on their faces and they're, they're, they're you know, they're going to be free. They're going to be free pirates. And um, it's not much action. So I'm, it's not really the, the kind of thing you guys have been talking about. But um, I like it for the demeanor. And I like it for the association it has with an early point in my fandom that uh, this, this is, represents what I loved about One Piece when I fell in love with One Piece. Also, these were in the original teaser trailer for Strong World. These were the outfits they were wearing. That's true. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. So we, we, yeah, yeah. And it went. It went from you know American mafia to more Japanese mafia. I really. I. I mean, I, I like both of those color spreads too. I mean, I know one. I guess none of us talked about the Chapter Zero one. I really like that. I like that one too, but I, yeah. I think it just doesn't compare to some of the other ones I liked. Um, so for my number two, I did a super serious one. So I felt like my number one does not have to be as serious and it's not, uh, this one's really recent, but I, I, I fell in love with it and I continue to fall in love with it every time I look at it. And that's chapter 710, the, the Kung Fu movie, uh, oh, one piece so color good. spread. This I nearly am, made my list. I'm obsessed with this one cause it is ridiculous. It is awesome. It's all of those and everything in between. Plus you get movie references all over the place. It looks like Dragon Ball movie 13. DBC movie thirteen, the Golden Dragon. You've got that. You've got uh, you've got uh, Bruce Lee's uh, jacket. The from which Bruce Lee movie? I'm gonna kill myself with this. Um, anyway, Sanji's Enter the right Dragon. Now. I think it's I think it's Enter the Dragon. Um, I mean, I'm I'm a big Bruce Lee fan, so that's uh, although I can't remember the name of the movie though. <laughs> but no, so that was very cool. You get uh, you get. Usopp in a kind of Master Roshi ish. Master uh, I, I was uh, thinking more drunk, drunken, drunken master. master. Yeah, that. I de- well, I think that's what Master Roshi kind of was based off of, right? Maybe you get Kung Fu Chopper, which makes perfect sense. Um, the Bride of Frankenstein hair, and and you get yeah from uh, from Frankie, and you get and, and you get Nami and Robin like you don't usually see them. I mean that Showing that's up. also really cool. Showing off some leg, leg instead of. You know, boob, like you usually get. Um, you also have some really cool stuff. You got Luffy in the middle just coming at you with the kick. Uh, Zoro, uh, you got that panda for some reason. Um, 
<laughs> they also have uh, Bruce Lee's tracksuit from Game of Death. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, Game of Death. And on Sanji, not on Luffy, though. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, oh, that's okay. So that's the movie I was thinking of. But Luffy's also wearing a. Uh, that was definitely a Bruce Lee outfit as well. Probably. I think most of these were probably Bruce Lee outfits that I'm just forgetting. But well, the funny thing is, I think in a filler arc, uh, Brooke wore that yellow tracks or something very yes, similar to it. You're, you're right. You're right. He mm-hmm. did. Um, I, there's nothing I, I don't like about it. It's, it's cool. It's different. It's weird. It's funny. Um, I always enjoy when sometimes we get those color spreads when it's them not being pirates. <laughs> exactly. It's like, like oh, oh, they're cowboys here or, you know, they're martial <laughs> artists here. This is what One Piece would like if it would be like if it were a kung fu movie. A uh, kung fu movie. Um, so yeah, I and the little backgrounds we do get, I love, uh, which I guess would be mostly with Nami. And, One thing uh, while we're talking about this, and we never brought it up before, but I'm curious: are are Frankie, Brook, and Robin supposed to be the villains here? It looks like it. They kind of come off a little more menacing, and they're wearing all black, and Robin has knives. See, I, I thought that this was that it looked more like a like a collage of of yeah. you know a bunch of different things. Yeah, I I don't know. I like it. It's it's weird, and I this is this is definitely my favorite color spread. Um, yeah, I guess there's nothing else I have to say about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, this is this was a really cool segment. I wish we could do this. If, you know, I'm I'm sure Greg and Stephen have some really cool ones as well. So hopefully, I'm sure Greg does. I'm sure Greg <laughs> does. So when we get you know them, some of the other cast on, I do not mind doing another top five. Um, I doubt ours are going to be changing significantly anytime soon. So this is for for the core cast here. I think this is a. <laughs> This is what uh, our top five is. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Don't forget, Gorilla is out now. Pick it up if you can. Uh, at You could get it online. It's totally, it's really cool. It's definitely worth it. Uh, or you could do what Ed does and get the calendars, which are another really cool <laughs> way to get color it has, spreads. It uh, has six of the best color spreads of the year. Um, and and a, they're giant. Yes. Yeah. And, and they a, look great, too. They're printed on great paper. And uh, for people out there, well, if you have a favorite color spread, let us know. Um, we'll there talk are, about it next week. We'll talk about it next week. There are a lot that we wanted to put in here. I'll tell you right now, there's a lot I really wanted to talk about that did not mm-hmm. make it. That, the list like 25. But yeah, we never get this in the top five. So we had to choose our top five. This is what we came up with. I'm sorry if your favorite was not one of them. That does not mean we hate it. We probably still love it to death. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go into the next segment. All right. This has been the unofficial One Piece podcast, episode 301 for January 13th, 2014. Good episode this week, guys, right? Oh, yeah. Man. I agree for the part I was in. (laughs) The rest (laughs) of it was terrible. I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know. We had a lot of fun talking about the the filler. More fun than I had watching it. <laughs> um, I didn't have any fun watching it. See, we should it, do this so with the Oppie's arc. Oh, God. No. Let's not talk about that ever. What if I bought you all drinks? <laughs> and then watch the Oppie's arc? <laughs> yeah. Okay, like I would do that. type of thing? I, I would do that. I will. People, let Gladly. us know. Didn't we, do that? didn't we do that with movie eight and then throw it yeah, out? Yeah, but we <laughs> thought that would be good. <laughs> and it, so, so you think watching the entire like, we don't have, arc no, not, it? like we don't have to do it in one sitting but I'd love no, to kind of like six like, hours yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, feels more like 12 can we watch it like in 10 time you know speed <laughs> mark this under like the worst yeah. idea <laughs> Steve has ever had <laughs> what was that I said mark this under the worst idea you have ever had <laughs> I'm not going to make the joke <laughs> He knows what I'm talking about. So, uh, no one else does. And, you know, we know that um, people around the world listen to us. So there's so many people out there where my crappy jokes just fall on death ears. Were you saying something? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, so thanks to, thanks to everyone uh, who helped out on this episode. Uh, Jose, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at J-E-A-R-G-U-M-E-D-O. And as I pimped before on the Piece Together uh, segment... Please listen to the Toonami Faithful podcast this week. We have Usopp voice actor and original Tom Sonny Strait on the show, uh, which I haven't recorded that interview yet, but it will be recorded, I promise. And out, maybe. By the and time out, here. probably before this. Yeah. Uh, you can listen to that at Um, Dude, what, what's been going on with you? 
What's, go- my What's going on with your life? Well, um, uh, I've been doing this really awesome thing, Super Art Fight. Check out superartfight.com for more information. Um, I've been drawing a lot. Check out my Twitter at Dude Exclamation. Also the same thing on Tumblr. Uh, and uh, there's a really neat uh, One Piece art collaboration thing going on. If all y'all love One Piece and like drawn, uh, hashtag One Piece collab on... Uh, on Twitter to find out more about that. Yeah, I keep forgetting to mention that. That's a really good Yeah, I'm involved in that, and I haven't drawn my character yet. Oh, yeah, I've drawn like four already. Get on that, Steve. Steve well, it's, it's, it's digital, and yeah. I suck at just digital digital drawing freehand. No, you don't. No, you don't, Steve. I'm yeah. sure you're great. I'm okay. But I don't know. I, I, I don't want to I don't, I don't want to just puss out and do like, oh, I'm just going to draw him standing. I, I want him to do some action. But I want to get him done because there's another character I saw that no one's claimed. And I want to claim him. And Which you can't character? tell us who yeah. he is. I don't know you can't. Who it is. You cannot tell. Uh, otherwise, I might. Oh, I'm going to go for it. No. <laughs> anyway, um, so I've been doing that. I've uh, been working on your songs, all y'all. So get ready for that. Hopefully, by the end of the month, that's my projected release date. So get hype. Speaking of release dates, OPP Japan, March. <laughs> um, and uh, Steve, is there anything? I know you have projects, so is there anything happening? Well, I'm just going to be doing a bunch of cons uh, this year. That's why I know for now. I'll be at KatsuCon next month. Um, Boston. Uh, I'm going back to Zenkai Con. Uh, Asen. Uh, and I will be at AX. Somehow, some way, I'll be at AX. He'll figure out a way. I, I'd, I'd suggest a plane. Um, <laughs> and how could the good people out there I was thinking us? cruise. Well, they can contact that. They can contact us at onepiecepodcast.com, uh, twitter.com, youtube.com, facebook.com, slash onepiecepodcast, onepiecepodcast.tumblr.com. That's our Tumblr. Onepiecepodcast at gmail.com is our email address. Uh, One Piece Podcast is our Skype name. Don't forget to um, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. Don't forget to subscribe on the Stitcher Smart Radio app. Um, and they can also call us on our phone number, Zach. Our phone number is 347-497-MAJI. MAJI. MAJI. <laughs> the phone number again is 347-497-6254. Call, call anytime. anytime. Time. Now call I'm me. early. Jesus. Call me. With your questions, comments, theories, and reasons why you could tell when I pause, it's for complete disdain for Jose getting it completely wrong. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm okay with it. I'll be fine. Probably. You'll live. <laughs> you're, you're holding back tears. <laughs> I'm doing your movie. Shut up. Oh, right. Thank you, Jose. Um, <laughs> but next time it's Maji, not Magi. Um, I didn't say Ma- I didn't say Magi. Who said that? Gift of the Magi. Who the fuck said that? <laughs> <laughs> um, right, before we go, I, I did forget to say that uh, we are putting our episodes now on YouTube at youtube.com slash one piece podcast. You can check those out just a month after they come out. We have put the first three up quick in a row. Uh, they'll be coming out every Saturday, uh, two ninety eight. uh, the mystery man in the rock and cravat that comes out next week on, uh, YouTube. So check it out once again, youtube.com slash one piece podcast. But for this week for the one piece podcast, my name is Zach. My name is Ed. And my name is Steve. We'll see you next week. Everyone. Goodbye. Bye. 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 God said Bye-bye. to Noah, there's going to be a floody, floody. Do it yourself an arky, arky. I don't know. We done here. <laughs> Get those animals up on the arky, arky. <laughs> <laughs> I did that for Steve. That's not going on here. Hello, 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 hello. How was it again? It's like, hello, hello.
Hello. Hello. Hello. Hello, I am from Australia. Good day. It's <laughs> Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman. <laughs> <laughs> Tasmania. Steve Irwin. <laughs> Staying right through the art. Through the heart, I guess. I don't know. You know, but, my friend Vaughn that you met, I kept doing that around him. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, Vaughn. Like, Vaughn's cool as shit. He loves Frank Zappa. Oh my god. <laughs> I wanna do you all. <laughs>